All right. Good morning. Transported from dispatch. All passengers on board. You can ask for the clearance to take off. All right. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you might be in time and space. Saturday morning. Kenny is here. Yeah. So today is um, I'm not creating a new episode for this. This is going to be a continuation, a weekend continuation of uh, episode six. <laughs> I want to create a whole new title art and everything. So today I just need to grind. That's what this is going to be about. I just need to make as much money as I can today in the uh, in this Neo Fly career mode add-on for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I've been doing these, uh, this you know, to try to make it interesting. You know, creating a storyline around it. Uh, Kenny is the sky dude, bitten by a radioactive bird. Somewhat manner, T. Tut Hill feels compelled to become Kenny as the Sky Dude. All right, so we are still. Uh, I respawned over here at. Uh, all right, a spaceport, and luckily the simulator picked up where we left off, and um, I'm gonna be heading back to K. BJC. And we've already got a passenger on board here. You're good to go. Contact the tower for clearance. Taxi 2 and hold short runway 26 using taxiway Alpha Kinias 21. Alright, so we got our clearance. I'm going to go ahead and let uh, Steve, our AI, take over the uh, taxiing for the moment. Um, make sure you're seeing what I'm seeing. Nope, you're not. You're seeing the NeoFly screen. Okay. So we need to go all the way back across town. Not that far. Just what's going on here? It wasn't that far. We were just supposed to go to KBJC. Huh. like it doesn't see the job it didn't uh doesn't put our arrival kbkf did i pick the wrong airport uh it says kbkf passenger where's kbkf on the screen let's uh hmm oh no we didn't get her well we'll be able to do it now no oh, good all right let's take a look at the map now see it yeah they did there it is just over here at broomfield near broomfield so
I-25. I'll go ahead and check the live weather, but I might have to turn it off again. The weather was so bad last night; they didn't want us to uh, to even uh, to get clearance to take off. It was IFR only, and to get clearance to land, it was IFR only. So there's no point in having the uh, kind of have a feeling that's what they're gonna do now. Looking at the live weather when I switch it on, wicked overcast. So they'll probably say IFR only again because the visibility is so low. I'm just going to leave it off. Do pardon me, I'm trying to adjust my desk here. this here I need a new desk arrangement Hey, hey, let me stop right here. Hey, I just noticed Nemesis Chicken. Hey, hey, in the chat. <laughs> Nobody ever comes in the chat, so I wasn't looking. Yeah, now I'm bitten by a radioactive bird. Now I am a super chicken. I hope Nemesis Chicken is still there. Hey, you still there? Oh, how awesome. I'm sorry if I missed you. Hey, there you go. Yeah, right? Good to see you, Nem. Yeah, I got this. Oh. <sighs> I got plenty of rest. It's just I'm such a night owl that in the morning my body's just like, nah, nah. I picked up this neat career add on for uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, this career add on. And like most career add ons, you're going to have to grind a lot. So kind of have to do a lot of grinding before I can get good plans. I'm stuck in an old uh, Cessna 152 for right now. So I'm just going to be doing these grinding missions to try to raise some money. And everything's terribly expensive. When you land on an airport, they charge you a fee. If you try to transfer your pilot anywhere or move your plane anywhere, they charge you a fee and everything is terribly expensive. And then I was making some help videos and in demonstrating, I had to move my plane around and my pilot around a few times. So blew like 15, $16,000. That's what I get for trying to make some help videos. Hope everything's going good with you, star citizen. Have a great flight. 
It's a beautiful time to fly. It is when you have these super abilities to change the weather to whatever you want. Other than that, it's not. Hey, where'd my chat window go? Yeah, you have to, um, you have to pay for better planes and you have to take qualifying tests and everything else. Let me, uh, let me open up the NeoFly screen here. Pause this. Yeah, in NeoFly, this uh, add on here. Okay. Uh, yeah, so these are the jo this is the job screen. Oh, so I got an update from them here. Star Citizen 319 just dropped yesterday. 318 was a complete wreck and didn't play at all. We'll see how this uh, point releases does. Got my fingers crossed. So yeah, this is the jobs panel and the hangar panel and and down here you have tests that you have to do to qualify for planes and this is where i uh, learned that you will spend a lot of money when you transfer your pilot and your plane to a different location so i wanted to take the test to get the cessna skyhawk but i can't afford it but i took the test for it so it was like three grand or more to move your pilot and then i had to move him like three times for demonstration purposes yeah lots of cash and uh, here's the the market. Here's uh, let's see, Is that the market. Here's the market. Oh no, this is for items. It's one of the things that they uh, they do that they uh, haven't fully implemented, which is fine is uh, you don't have to go to airports at the moment just to buy all the resources that you need. So even that if I'm at an airport that doesn't have the resources I need to fly somewhere, they'll they'll load me up with it, which is nice. Other than that, you would have to fly to a particular airport that's selling a certain thing, then buy your resources, and then I'm glad we're not having to do that at the moment. Here is the plane. You can rent planes. But look at these prices. Ridiculous. So I have been looking for a Cessna Skyhawk, the G1000. So I'm going to need, that's the plane that I want next. That's my, that's my favorite plane. 374,000 for the Cessna Skyhawk G1000. Uh, it was a little cheaper, 370,000. But as you see up here in the top corner, I'm at 25,000. So I have a ways to go. I uh, was playing Medieval Dynasty for the last couple of weeks, and uh, it started out as a, I think I love this game, and it quickly turned into, no, I, I think I hate this game. It was a love-hate. It's a, it's a, a neat game, but it's, it's still, the developer's still working on it, and right now it's just kind of like pointless. You know, you create a like a medieval sim village, and then it's basically just managing your medieval sim village from here on out, and that's just no fun. So I left that one. I quit. I gave up. No. Um, you make about well, it depends. They, all the different jobs are different prices some of the best ones i've seen so far you know you can make four thousand on a run today's jobs right at the moment i didn't see anything over like two grand so this one's like a thousand seven hundred i thought if i came up here to denver there would be better job opportunities it being near a big city and more expensive and actually it's 
actually not these are kind of cheaper jobs but now I'm reluctant to move my pilot back to Colorado Springs because that's going to be another couple of grand couple of grand so don't want to do that just might as well stick it out here for a while today All right, and we should be on track now. Well, yeah, I hope uh, I hope everything goes good with Star Citizen. That's uh, that's tough that they did something to screw up the three eighteen. But if anybody, I mean, they they definitely know what they're doing. So I'm sure it'll all work out. I have been occasionally checking up on it and seeing like little, you know, new ships that they're putting into it. It's like there's a lot of ships to choose from now. Oh, and I've got to baby this engine too. There's wear and tear on your engine with this, with the, uh, there's wear and tear on your plane and there's wear and tear on your engine. And so when you take off in this plane, it has a tendency to redline. So I'm trying to make sure that once I get into the air, lower the RPMs, stay in the green. And are you still playing other titles? Are you still playing the uh, Grand Theft Auto? And are you... I'm, I'm imagining you're still doing Star Trek Online. I am still with my, uh, my Logitech joystick. It's sentimental. Like the last time I, you know, when, when I was in California, that situation where I was, when I was with my dad. So when I was out there in California, I didn't have a joystick. I didn't have any way to play. I'm letting Steve handle the radios. So, so yeah, I really wanted. Jeez, they're talking so much. Oh, I keep hearing about Elder Scrolls. Everybody's been talking about it. There's one lady I follow on Twitter. That's her thing. Oh, World of Warships. Yeah, I've been, uh, I almost got into that once. I remember seeing the ads for it. Looks pretty crazy. But yeah, um, I, I really kind of wanted to get a new uh, joystick and, and set up because I'm, I'm really starting to get into the military planes and was enjoying them. But it, this is, it's sentimental. Because when I was out in California, I needed a joystick. So in the afternoon with my father and heading over to uh, the mall to go find a joystick. Oh, it's starting to, it's starting to get a little bit old and some of the buttons are starting to stick and I should probably find a video on if there is such a thing on how to take this thing apart and clean it. Eventually I'll have to and I'll put this up on a shelf somewhere to remember my dad by That's good to hear you're still hanging out with Rachel Oh 
hope she's doing well. I hope everybody's doing well. Think about everybody all the time. I have thought about, uh, I think about it all the time. I think about coming back and I think about, uh, broadcasting again. Finally, once when I finally got all my stuff paid for, my Sam paid for and everything taken care of, and then I stopped. So that's typical. I do miss broadcasting. And I've been kind of keeping an eye on it now that they have the Strange New Worlds and the Picard series, and it, you know they're they're doing kind of what we thought they were going to do eventually, you know, by with the tie-ins, but still, you know, not the. You still have your Sam station, nice. I wish I was able to, I don't know how some people are getting away with it. Some people are able to on YouTube, you know, do broadcast and use music. And I just don't understand how they have managed to uh, work out something with YouTube to do it. But anytime I played anything immediately, live stream has stopped, copyright violations. And so just, no, oh, no, haven't done any of that. Oh, but yeah, so their uh, Star Trek's tying in, uh, the Star Trek Online seems to be tying into all the new TV content, but again, not in the way that, uh, you know, in the standard way that they've been doing it. Is anybody still even doing radio stations over there? I, I imagine that they are. I imagine that people are still, uh, I'm sure subspace is still going and I'm sure they're still doing, uh, doing stuff. Oh, uh, you've got a new computer. Can I have your old computer? Your computers are always the best. I, I'm, uh, still on the one that I picked up for being able to qualify to get into the alpha for the uh, flight simulator. And it's a, just a mid-range Dell. Yeah, it's not not the best computer, but it's it's done, it's performed like a champ. This computer has done everything that I've needed it to do, and it's been good enough. And I have been thinking about uh, soon, shortly, they'll I'll have some things worked out to where I can... Uh, start thinking about getting a new one myself I've got to wait for a couple of big checks to come in yeah still going good all right I just need to head west now Well, good. Oh, no. I, uh, my daughter needed a, a streaming machine, so I gave her my my last one, the one that I had been using all the years for Star Trek Online. And um, I don't know how, but she immediately uh, caused the RAM to blow up. And that was her excuse. So now that... Uh, so 
she, she kind of totaled monster so we had to get her a new one so she's got a new one and I still don't have a new one How are your jellyfish doing? And how are your new cats doing and your cats doing? And uh, I should probably talk to you about that in, in private. See how you're doing. Oh my. Your new PC will score in the top 1% of all PCs that 3D Mark is benchmarks. Holy moly. Yeah, they're getting a. Uh, they're getting very impressive. Uh, the link in um, do you send that in Skype let me, I'm, let me scroll back up here Oops. all right let me uh okay all right I will yeah I don't have Skype on at the moment uh, is it just a gaming uh, benchmark thing or is, is it uh, music videos? Or cat video? Sorry to hear that about the jellyfish. Oh. Uh, the link you sent in Skype. What is it? That's what I was asking. I was asking if it was a music video or a cat video or a computer link video. Yeah, it's not too bad for this level of machine. Oh. Yeah. I can say PPP and I don't think anybody will understand. But it's, uh, you know, since it's YouTube, that's about all I can say is PPP. I'm still heading west. Oh, a little off.
Oh, okay. It's linked to your PC benchmark. Okay, yeah, I can pull that up and uh, without having anything play or. What is the. Yeah, I guess it, the information will be in the PC mark. I was, but uh, what I do, what is the CPU and what graphic card are you going to get? That's. That's what I'm interested in. The latest. What are they at now? 4090s or something? Yeah, I haven't. Uh, because I'm not in the buying, I'm trying to stay away from <laughs> looking what's out there. I get too antsy. I'm like, I want it and I want it now. Last I looked, they were like doing 4090s or something. get my PP my PPP stuff ready here and I need to contact this airport I thought I was going to KB JC but I don't think so now Going to oh it is KBJC. Okay. Tower City is needed for at least six miles northeast of five thousand nine hundred feet. Call for landing. Give me your two one tower. Altimeter two nine or decimal nine or two wind call is your left base runway three zero one. Give me your two one wind call clear to land runway three zero one. Enter left. All right. I was just up here in this part of town earlier, well, earlier in the week, still transporting. And so, uh, doing a lot of deals with, um, I won't say <laughs> vendors, brokers, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> clients, <clears throat> by the way, people up here. Driving a lot of cars from here down to uh, back to Colorado Springs and then down to Pueblo. I don't think I want to do the entire traffic pattern. I think I'll just come in over here and then do a turn. Those red things in the HUD are your, um, it's a visual aid for new pilots. I like keeping up, keeping them up there to help people visualize the, the landing pattern. So those are the boxes you fly through that will help you fly your pattern down to the runway. So normally you enter at the larger ones over there and work your way down. Oops. Work your way down this way through through all the gates. 
and once you file the gates, you'll be lined up for your runway. Get some flaps down here. So yeah, it's it's to help new pilots visualize the pattern entry. Yes. But but it was butter. This is where they parked us last time too. Uh, that's a problem. Uh, yeah, so I have to dump off a passenger. Ooh, tight turn. Whoa. So I picked up uh, a while back, I picked up an F-35, you know, and it's a, uh, of course it's, it, it is not going to be probably what the real world is, the, what the one in the real world is like. It doesn't have any of the armaments or, you know, you can't do anything, can't shoot anything with it yet. But I got to tell you that F-35 is like flying a ufo it is one of the coolest most fun planes military planes i normally don't care for military planes because everything that you learn everything that you learn about flying oops goes right out the window when you jump into your first military planes and i was hoping that by the time i got to the f-22 working my way up from the 14 to the 16 to the 18 to the 22s that it would all become more intuitive and it wasn't it just every time with a new plane you have to learn everything all over again and the f-35 it was like somebody finally said you know it's probably a good idea that we don't have our pilots have to learn everything from scratch and let's let's just go ahead and make this you know, like, uh, let's just go ahead. Disembarking of passengers can begin. Just go ahead and make it like a general aviation plane. Make everything common and similar to what people have learned their whole life flying in all the other planes. It's amazing. I love it. And the thing doesn't want to fall out of the sky. It just, it's just, if the, the real world equivalent is anything like the one in the simulator, Holy moly, it is just a dream to fly. And then it's uh, the the B version has the vertical takeoff. Transporter from dispatch. Oh, hey, check this out. That's because Nemesis Chicken is here. I am now second officer. You can now fly. Out here. You can now fly these new missions. Express, advertising, sensitive, secret passenger, and parachutist. Ah, I heard the advertising one is tricky, that you actually like have to fly up and like grab the banner and then fly the banner between point to point and then release the banner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a dream. 
Dream a dream. Um, yeah, the learning curve on the all the other planes was not diff too difficult. Thank goodness that you know in, in Microsoft they at the moment um, the pacifists that are running things. That's the best way to put it. Pacifists. They don't want to bring back the Microsoft combat and they don't want there to be any combat. And they everybody's excuse is well, DCS World. If you want combat, go to DCS World. And that's a Russian product. I don't want to get too controversial, but you know, and it is an amazing simulator too. But I would I would rather support an American product. And hopefully smarter business heads realize, hey, well, money's money. By the way, if not, eventually I might make my way back over to DCS World. It was fun. Okay, so let me look at the jobs now. Might have to watch some training videos on how to do the advertising banner one. While we're here, smoke if you got them. And uh, need a break. While we're sitting here for a moment. Let's see what we have. I'll run to Denver. Let's first of all, let's find out which one's going to pay the most here on the screen. Two, three, two, five, three, one, three, two, three, six, three, nine. Ooh, here's one for 4,000. What is this one? This is just run a, what is it? It's a run 291 pounds of phones to Centennial. For 4,000, that's our job. There's this one, same thing. But definitely that's the job we're taking right now. Let's set that up. Transporter from dispatch. I see you asked for a fragile cargo mission. The ground crew is waiting to carefully load the crates for you in the parking lot. We've got to be butter on this one too. Ooh. I'm sure it's awesome. Transporter. Loading is complete. Let's go. Yeah, I'm uh I haven't got to try anything new or transport anything new recently. Everything that we've been dealing in has been old stuff. And so um yeah. When I was doing my runs to Kansas, it was all new stuff. And so, yeah, I'm a couple actually like two years behind, actually since COVID, really. I haven't done any Kansas runs, and th those are all done now. And uh, so I haven't really got to play and check out, like, what's new. The last new vehicles I got to play in were blowing my mind. All, you know, just little things, like they'll add... Uh, I think it was one of the, the Avalon. I think it was a Ford Avalon. I'm not sure. But the dashboards, I mean, it, almost like they have AI in them. One of them was like, you've been driving for eight hours. Maybe you should pull over and have some coffee. And it displayed all the, all the pit stops that were ahead of me and which ones had the best coffee deals. And you can use a coupon. I mean, it's kind of crazy and kind of scary, but at the same time, it's really kind of cool. It was like, that was like driving UFO. I'm going to have to tell my cousin, see if we can get our hands on one of them to, to check out. So, yeah, the thing was like, uh, yeah, there's a, a 7-Eleven up ahead. And if you want, you can press this and you can get a coupon and the lighting, all interior lighting. Well, you want to change the interior lighting of your car? Yeah, let's do that. Press this button. Just, it's it's getting neat. I'm noticing a lot of the trucks now even. 
That's what I was just going to say. All the new vehicles are getting the uh, the glass stuff, the the touch screens and. Right, I need a taxi out of here. We are heading south. Ground KM two one one call for twenty. Oh my. Wow, for an SUV too, and that's not one of the larger, you know, like the Escalade or anything like that. And to have that many speakers and man, all out. What did I just do here? Oh. Did you shut my engine off? They're gone. Oh, I'm probably out of fuel. Probably what I did, I forgot to fuel up. Well, good thing that didn't happen in the air. No, I've got fuel on. Oh, and I didn't check my weight requirement. Come back over here. Reconnect. Like this. 451 pounds. Oh man, I'm sorry. Thank you for telling me that. My first couple of days back doing live streaming, I did one where that was up for 45 minutes before I noticed, but nobody was coming into chat to, you know, inform me of something like that. I'm well, I'm, I'm so happy over here talking to you that the same kind of thing. I kind of lose my mind there for a minute and forget what I'm supposed to be doing okay right Should stop. Oh, the AI at the moment. Man. Still be open. What is going on? Closed. That's open. Weird. Engine does not want to start. Ah. Uh, I'll go back. I hit my battery somehow. All right, back on track.
Do I have to request clearance again? Come on, Steve, take over. Go live stream, Steve. Wake up. Come on. Come on, Steve. He's like, I don't want to. Well, all right then. Put myself. Double check it. One way are we on? My two one. Really, all the way down there. <clears throat> check i'm not too familiar with uh these airports oh. it just pulled up the diagram No. No, twenty one. Oh, what? Oh, well. It says, it said 21, but there's no 21. Double check, I guess. Oh, hold short of runway 30 using taxiway. <clears throat> and he has 2 1. in the right spot
take off, pilot. Have a safe and steady flight. Thank you, Elena. We'll do our best. We've got a nice golf course over here. Flaps up still, don't we? to the south of Denver to Centennial Airport. We we're getting a little bit of push from the west. Got a little trim in. I don't know that this plane actually has trim tabs, but anyway. It looks like it does. We've been getting a lot of rain here. Everything's starting to finally turn green again. Come back to life. Everything's looking really beautiful around here. Can't wait to get my hands on that Cessna Skyhawk again with these older Saying, can't wait to get my hands on some better planes. These planes don't have any 
automation whatsoever. No autopilot, no any of that. No GPS. Just old school GA flying. We'll get there. So it seems like that's the sweet spot at, there's no RPM on here. Oh yeah, 21, 22, 22, 51 RPM. <clears throat> that seems like the sweet spot. A little bit, uh, a little bit more power on. Keep us doing straight and level flight. Definitely not moving uh, as fast as a star citizen. about due for some more coffee here. Denver Broncos Stadium in the lower corner. Our airspeed indicator is getting ready to cover it up, but come over to this view. No. Oh, what happened to our sound? Oh. Our drone camera is so far away from the plane that we don't we don't actually even hear it. Of course. Of course, of course. You forget somebody like that. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful lady. Of course, of course. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, my memory may not be that great, but it's not that bad. Wow. I'll bet. What are you driving now? Didn't, uh, last I heard, didn't, uh, Becky get married? Wasn't she getting married and settling down and doing all that good stuff? And what are you driving now?
just to even have your car there with you, whether you're driving it or not. <clears throat> just to have it there. Ah. Oh, aha, that's right. Okay. Well, I hope things are going well for him and everything is blissful. Oh my goodness. Yeah, things are blissful. Wow. That is a handful. Um, wow. How cool. What a nice thing to do, too. Right, yeah. I have to wait to get to uh, Skype. Tell you about uh, things that are going on here. But at least with my sibling, it's it's not it's not good. She's losing her mind. Want to get back to the cockpit, please. There we are. Yeah, it's bad. Everything else is fine. Everybody else is doing fine. Mom's doing good. Mom just did a. My mom just did a short little tour of in one go around England, Scotland, Venice, Rome, and other places around Italy. And then at the same time, did one of those where. They take you on all the tours. So she's like, I was at the castle, and then I was at Sterling Castle, and then I was at Windsor Castle, and I was here, and I went to the Louvre, and I went to the Eiffel Tower, and that I was so happy for her. She just went all over the place. Got a gondola ride in Venice, and very cool, Ma. We are landing in Centennial Airport. This is at the south end of Denver. No, she did a, uh, it was all flying. Yeah. 
Yeah, she said she went everywhere. But it's those uh, pre-planned tour groups, you know, that take you everywhere. So, yeah, she got to see a lot. I was so excited. I'm like, a, you know, where's the best food? And surprisingly, her answer was the best food is here in the United States. I'm like, really? You're in France? She goes, maybe just where we were. It's just, you know, nothing was that great to say oh my lord you know i'm sure somebody like christine my wife um you know she knows all the she's she's a foodie so she's she would know all the chefs and know which places to go but so i suppose with the tour guide you know them I, who knows but she just wasn't impressed with any of the other food. Uh, you know she did like the croissants in in france she's like well they're they pride themselves on those, so those are always good. True. Yeah, even uh she took my um she took my sister's kids. Two of my sister's kids with her, her granddaughters. And uh and they said the same thing. They're like the best food is here. And then they seem to get offended or they make you feel bad if you want more cream and sugar in your coffee. They're like, ew, you put that much cream and sugar in your coffee? Insulting. Some flaps in. I drive by this airport all the time. Usually seeing it from this road right right in front of us. I'm usually traveling eastbound. I come off of I-25 and I take this road that's directly below us. And it curves all the way around Denver so you don't have to drive through Denver. It's a toll, but it's so worth it. So normally when I'm going to the far north of Denver or to places beyond Denver like Windsor. It's called Windsor, Colorado. We do a lot of deals out there. So much faster to take this toll road that goes all the way around Denver. And then uh, it takes us by Denver International, so we usually pull over and watch some of the planes come in and take off. I'm supposed to try to make this a butter landing. We've got 
fragile cargo. A little tight. I didn't hear anything shatter, so. No, 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 it doesn't actually. I, I, you know, I. I guess I'm, I'm finally, after all this, all this time, comfortable with. Uh, with the the landing I know that when I get down to the I don't want me to go this way when I get down to the runway uh I will be at the at the proper touchdown speeds just above stall Absolutely So do they have anything like, uh, you know, it's been so long since I played Star Citizen, but you know, how do you, uh, how are you making money? Is, isn't there a career path or missions that you do in Star Citizen to, to make money? Aren't you, you know? What is the, what is the best way that you're making money in star citizen because don't do same thing don't you have to be able to afford new new ships or is it still if you want a new ship you pay real money Okay. See how we did. Transport from dispatch. Someone is coming to take the cargo. I'll call you when it's done. <laughs> Dang, sounds like they're jostling things around. Easy there, easy. Take it easy. Wow, that's everything is all good. That's it. I'm surprised that they're still doing character wipes. That's unfortunate that that they That's unfortunate. Uh no, no. Um, no, not in the simulator. They they give us free planes occasionally, but the marketplace is insane with third party developers and um other planes that are um definitely you have to pay. But it's it's sad that, that after all this time that see they what they would do is Wow, they still consider it an alpha. That's nuts. Even with uh, the flight simulator, I think they only did a couple of wipes during alpha. But what they do is they store all your information in the cloud, all your pilot log information in the cloud. So when they do a big old update, usually your log information stays intact. So um, there's, you know, 
There's since release, there's never any wipes. Ten years. That's nuts, man. That's how I felt about the medieval dynasty when I wasn't gonna stick it out for any amount of time to see where that one goes. I'll just check back in on them in a couple of years, whenever. That's sad to think that as we're getting up there in age, nothing to do with you personally. It's just a, a, a comment that that you, you know, some people might not live to see the, the dang thing finished or released. Makes me mad. Come on, man. I'm I'm short on time here. Can't be uh, wasting another ten years waiting for you to get it together. All right, let's see what our next job is. Oh, these are some more high paying ones. Oh, these are in the springs. I wonder why that far. I don't want to go down to the springs again. Okay, so this is back to the airport that we were at. Yeah, uh, yeah, and that makes me mad. Wow, so the most money is to just go back to the airport that we were just at. What do they want? They want phones. Bring 325 pounds of phones to Rocky Mountain Metropolitan. Right. Well, hopefully you do. That's the thing, man. I, hopefully you do. Another 20, 30. You know? You're somebody that deserves to live long and prosper. Long time. Here come the drunkards again. Start banging the bottles. Transported from dispatch. Loading sensitive cargo. Please stand by. Hey, look at the time. EPP. All right. Yes. I had to drop another They're like, hey, if you drop another 20 bucks, you can get this fancy little thing that you can use in the simulator. That includes uh, all of this stuff. Um, but at the moment, it doesn't have the jobs included. So for an extra 20 bucks, I got a bunch of stuff I, I'm not going to use for now, or who knows if ever. Uh, and that was kind of a bust. I mean, I, the map is nice, better than the one currently the, in the simulator, but, um, yeah, the NeoFly window is still a separate window outside the simulator, and I have no choice but to go back and forth still. 
Let's see if Steve will take over the uh, taxi this time. He fell asleep last time. He rebels every now and then. Besides, I ain't doing nothing. See what he does now. Come on, Steve, wake up. Sounds like the engine. The RPMs are going up. Hey, he's awake. All right. Yes. And yes. And yes. Yes, I'm. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm using OBS. They have the same kind of setup as uh, as Twitch does, but I don't have any followers over on Twitch, so I would have to. Uh, so, I still have enough followers left from the podcasting and broadcasting days that I qualify for monetization. And so everything that I do, I'm able to I'm able to monetize it at the moment. As long as I don't drop below twelve hundred subscribers. But so over on Twitch, you know, you need the same kind of thing. You have to have so many subscribers before you can uh take advantage of monetization. And uh for an older person like myself who's doing things like flight simulator yeah not a big audience draw and subscriber draw now if I was 18 again and I was a female and I was busty I'm not saying that they have advantages over uh, middle aged guys like us but And that's good for them, and, you know. For example, and uh, it's probably a bad example, but but my daughter, she's a very attractive young lady. All the qualities that nerds are looking for, nerd and just guys in general. And uh, you know, so for her to immediately get the rec she did it in like a week. In, in a week's time, she had enough subscribers to start monetizing. Dang. So it's good that she's doing good. She's uh, working really hard at a job, and she uh, spent some time asking me to help her learn how to use OBS and get set up and... And now she's becoming the master. How many subscribers do you have now on Twitch? Some rubber banding here. Centennial Tower Kineas, two one ready for straight out departure at runway three five right. Kineas two one. Thank you. In uh in OBS, there is an automatic scene switcher. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. There's you know for. I suppose if I was playing Hogwarts Legacy or something, who knows? Maybe I'll get more playing The Sims. Or, you know, whatever uh, popular games. 
Oh, I have to now. My, I need any pennies that I can get. So I need to take advantage of, uh, so that doesn't happen. What you're pointing out is the, the job screen. And um, I need to learn how to create it in its own window. And I've done it before, but it just wasn't working the way I wanted it to. Right. Look at Steve. He's he's going off the runway here. Come on, man. My AI is going to crash us. And we're going to lose our plane. What is he doing? Oh my lord. You silly AI. What is the problem? That was scary. Cuz if I lose a plane at this point, Wow. If I lose a plane at this point, I don't have enough money built up to get another plane. I would have to start over. I have insurance and I you know, that probably cover things. You have to pay for insurance in this in this title if you want. You don't have to. But the very first day I was playing, I had a controller mishap and my controller wasn't configured and I didn't have my insurance paid for. So the very first day that I was playing, I accidentally crashed the plane on a just I the throttle was stuck and just took off and I crashed and then I didn't have enough money to buy a new plane I just had to delete my pilot and create another one and start over wow yeah uh, that's the very first time I've ever seen my AI do that occasionally he rides the line on the right side a lot but I've never ever seen my I've never seen the AI I think he's just showing off for you He's like, eh, well, Nem's watching. I'll, I'll be crazy. Yeah, I've never seen it. That's a first. All right. And whenever I take control over, like whenever I switch this off, it's like he gets mad and he throws the plane. He's like, fine, you don't want me to fly? And the plane just immediately starts dipping. So watch when I turn this off. He's like, yeah, fine. Take over. See if I care. I didn't want to fly the damn thing anyway. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, I guess that's, yeah, that will chalk it up to that. No more PPPs for him. Man, I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna have to load up Star Citizen again at some point. I really want to see what you've got set up now. Because the last time we were hanging out, not only did you have amazing ships, but you had You had your hangar. Centennial Tower, Kineas, two one frequency change. And you had a jukebox and you had Wow, self drive. So I was saying, I'd love to. What? You mean they wiped all that too? I mean, all your vanity items and all your jukebox and your hangar stuff and all of that, you have to start over with all of that as well? 
Oh no. That's horrible. And that's what we've been asking for over here. We have a hangar that you can go to and you can swap planes, but you can't do anything in your hangar yet. And they don't have a whole lot of, um, they, as a matter of fact, they really don't have any. Um, like in the old days, you do a mission, you could get like a sticker or a t-shirt or an, any place you landed at, you could get a, like a custom vanity item for missions completed or places that you landed at and you would be able to display them on your pilot logbook but we don't have a place to display any of that either and so we've been asking for hangers as well functional hangers yeah i hope you definitely i'm glad you haven't lost anything and that you get it all back and eventually when you can get back into your hangar and redecorate that was so impressive Because it's taking so long, how is the community feeling about it? Are they, are they getting mad too? Are they losing interest? Are you, are they losing a lot of subscribers or it's just everybody's hanging in there? No problem at all. And they're still doing well. I think after 10 years, he's going to start making people mad, but you know, what do I know? Yeah, I thought that's what uh, that's what they were going to do next. I remember joking about you like, we need to get a, we need to get your jukebox in here. We need to do the radio, so we can listen to radio back in the uh, cargo bay, and we need to put like a hot tub back here. Okay, so they still got a pretty dedicated community. Yeah, it would be fantastic for you to be able to decorate. As much as AI is starting to scare people, uh, I am getting excited for... Um, what I'm looking for here in the future is, uh, you know, uh, the, the chat AIs, the ability, I, I remember, there's too much air, air traffic control chatter. It is going to be really interesting in in the next in the coming years to see the games that they're going to be able to create with these AI. So before they released Star Trek Online and we were all still pondering and describing the kind of experience that we wanted, I was learning about 64-bit computing and AI and what it can do. Yeah. And what it can do for um for gaming you know the AI can they can not only can they have a conversation with you but there's the potential that they remember every interaction with you they can learn from you they can teach other AI they can influence other AI so let's say you're you know you're star citizen and you're interacting with AI and you're a nemesis chicken so everybody loves you so all the AI that you talk to and come into contact with they be like, we love that guy. He's he's the best. And if you ever find yourself in trouble, the AI can also decide to come and offer you assistance and help you. And just the opposite. If you're a schmuck like Kinius, they'll be like, I don't like that Kinius guy. And they'll tell the the other AI, you know, I don't I don't like him. Maybe you shouldn't like him either. So they can influence each other. 
and then like oh he's in trouble i'm not gonna go help him i don't care but just the things that they're going to be able to do um with ai in the in the coming days it's for gaming anyway Better get clearance set up. We're getting close again. Today's uh, flights were, I announced that it was going to be a boring day because I just needed to spend time grinding today. Oh, you know, I didn't think about that. Oh, the AI. And that's something I hadn't thought about. That's, that is interesting to think about. That the AI will take out the trolls. That, yeah, the trolls are being crappy players and the AI are like, ah, oh, we're going to gang up on them. And that. <laughs> Unless you're talking about real trolls, like a D&D &D game, in which case they probably take out, they can help you take out the trolls. But I see what you're saying. And I hadn't, that's never, that's never dawned on me that how the AI can help reduce trolls in a game. Real people trolls. That's interesting. I've got to figure out where my drone is. The drone is so far away, I, I can't even hear my plane. I don't know if it's in front of us or back of us. I don't have a key set to center it back up and reset it. Oh, you know, there is a, there's a function in here I can use. forgot about this. So if I come back on here and hit reset, there we are. Now our drone is with us. Uh, that's something else I hadn't really thought about either. You're right about that. Anybody who's not reading the chat, in case you're lurking, Nemesis Chicken is saying, See, the big difference is that we have to pass on knowledge to each generation. The AI just never forgets. That's very profound. If aggroing a troll works a certain way, I will always know that and draw on that experience to make its next decision. So you're saying in some ways that AI, I'm going to get throttled here. AI is going to be like the worst woman because women never forget anything and they will use it all against you. They never forget anything. <laughs> <laughs> this is starting to sound like storm uh and that's really for joke purposes only but uh ladies uh 
but you see what I'm saying? That's just a, it's a, you know, that's a common stereotype and joke that women never forget anything. And they will, uh, they'll end, you know, they will always use, use whatever against you. So the AI is going to be like Uber. You remember what you did to me 15 years ago? I remember. For whatever reason, suddenly I'm hearing the theme song to the uh, greatest American hero in my head. Believe it or not, it's just me. I'm walking on air. Never thought I could feel so free. Flying away on a wing in a prayer. Who could it be? Believe it or not, it's just me. There was a time, about that time I was with my dad, that I would, I just would have never been able to do this. I was still having a, oh, you know, starting to get over my fear of landing. But if I wasn't lined up 10 miles out and perfect weather conditions, I just couldn't stick landing to save my life. And then I was like, if I can't land, there's no point in me learning how to fly and all the stuff required to learn how to fly. And uh, just time and persistence. And I stuck with it and I just kept my training going and kept learning and learning and learning and watching videos. And we have touched down. I'm so happy I took the time to learn how to do this. It's been very fulfilling. And this isn't even the fancy flying to catch me on a day when I'm doing airliner stuff and uh, I can actually program the uh, EFMC now do my own uh, manual flight programming and um, navigation triangulation Going to one, two, one, decimal, seven, Kineas, two, one. using all the proper airport charts SIDS and stars doing all the proper procedures. The only thing that I haven't really gotten good at and um, is they have these uh, servers you can go on to that have people doing air traffic control. And it is meant to teach you, well, one, they, they, they love doing it, but mostly it's meant to teach you how to verbally communicate with air traffic control. That's going to be another thing that AI is going to be able to help with in the coming years with a program like this. Um, you'll be able to do, I mean, they can do it now with Watson and some other tools, but they're not putting it in, but you can have voice communications and um, toggle your microphone to speak with air traffic control and learn how to speak air traffic control. You know, it's its own little language sometimes. And I'm just not comfortable with that yet. And um, 
but there are tools out there and again servers to go on to that allow you to um, interact with uh, people that are air traffic control and uh, practice your ATC speak I spent money on Steam picking up a program that was supposed to do that and then it was like well this version of the program doesn't use voice commands Ah, well, well, what's the point of that? Well, I just gave up on that. But it, that's all it does is it. Uh, it's an ATC type uh, experience. Yeah, the air traffic control games are pretty cool. That's what I was going for. It was It's an air traffic control one and you do the talking. Okay, pilot. Removing the fragile goods may take a little longer than normal. Stand by. There they go banging the bottles again. The bottom of the hour. That's the top near the top of the hour. Transporter. Another cargo mission completed. Thanks, and see you soon. Thank you. All right, let's find out how much shouldn't even look. You are clear to start your engine. We're 37,922. Wow, that is old. Uh, but I'm old enough to know exactly what you're talking about. You know, I remember those. I had a I had a buddy. As a matter of fact, I had a buddy in uh, in high school when I was in high school. He was in college already, and I remember him doing a similar thing. He was training to be air traffic control. And they, they, his mom was a travel agent, and she had actually hooked him up with a, an air traffic control program. And yeah, there's like two eighty six, three eighty six days. And, you know, it was just moving little, you know, cursor things around. But, yeah, not terribly. I mean, it was still graphical. But, yeah, old school. I'm amazed that we've we've reached this level. It's it's it blows my mind. I'm 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 happy to. <laughs> I act like I'm so old, uh, but life is short. Uh, but I'm so happy that, uh, you know, that we have, I've lived to see this level of computer technology already. The graphics are already this good. You're good to go. Contact the tower for clearance. So talking about, you know, the next computers and Uber machines. This one even doesn't even, it doesn't even utilize DX12. Uh, this one doesn't. It doesn't do RTX. It's not doing any ray tracing or any, you know, some of the things that can really add that spit polish and, and make it more real. And, you know, everything's always, I imagine, 10 more years. Wow. I mean, how much more after a, a few more years? How much more? Okay, so now I need to find another job. And let's see what we have here. Three, one, three, two. There's another four, three, six, three, nine. There's one at the bottom for 4,000. Basically, now we're just doing another run back to Kappa. For 4,000. So. What happened? What's going on here? You can't take a new job with an engine running. Oh. Oh, I hope this 
job doesn't vanish now. There we go. Good. Transporter from dispatch. Good morning. The sensitive cargo mission will start as soon as you get in your aircraft in the parking. Transporter, loading has started. Stand by. Cargo looks extremely delicate. We have secured it the best we can. Please taxi with caution. Yeah, we better not let Steve do it this time. Everything looks good from where I'm sitting. Taxi to the gun. Well, he doesn't ha he doesn't have a problem taxiing, I suppose, but he has a problem with the uh takeoff for sure. I'm not going to let him take off again this time. Track on gameplay, PC game, 1989. Even back then I remember thinking, this is the greatest stuff ever. Oh, he found a wiki page for it? Wow. Let's see. Go try to find it. Raycon. Gameplay. Nineteen eighty nine. Oh, that's this actually this is even more advanced than the one he was doing his was just like it looked like tic-tac-toe where you know the air the, the runways this is even way more advanced than that was That's so funny. I remember sitting there watching him play it and he's like, you know, this is boring. I want to show you another game. And he broke out an, a game called Leisure Suit Larry and Leisure Suit Larry was text based at the time. Oh, he's... did you ever see any of those games or remember any of those games? Leisure Suit Larry. Crack me up, man. They were already making adult games for the PC. <laughs> as soon as as soon as PCs were out.
and I remember that they they continued making uh, once things went graphical. I remember in the store seeing a. Uh, I'll be darned. You remember? I remember seeing that they started releasing graphical versions of Leisure Suit Larry. Well, that's hilarious. So not letting Steve do the takeoff on this one. I killed this last time. I wish my dad were around to see uh to see this but more so to you know show him all the other things that that I've learned and I think he'd be impressed. I think this would blow his mind. Yeah. Transporter from dispatch. Fly safe and remember to watch your landing. I think him and my uncle, my uncle was more so into electronics and my uncle, one of my uncle, speaking of Larry's, my uncle Larry, I, he never wore a leisure suit though. Uh, he was the one who was always bringing like the first video games to the family, like Pong. Uncle Larry introduced Pong to the family. Uncle Larry introduced the first Atari to the family. Any games or any gaming systems. Uncle Larry was the first one to have one and and so us kids always hanging out with Uncle Larry because he always had the cool toys and uh, I wish he were around too to see where we're at we were talking earlier about you know not living to see a game get out of beta or out of alpha after 10 years but him not being around to, to see where we are with all of this today. Same with my dad. I think with the flying stuff, this would just blow his mind. And I think something like this, if he would have had it when he was younger, if he would have had a simulator like this, I think my dad would have continued on with his training uh, and learning how to do instrument flying. The combat game. Um, Microsoft released a series of of games that were called Combat, and they were Flight Simulator Combat. I don't remember it ever being. Uh, there were missions that you could do that would, but there you had to get I think a separate title. Yeah, yeah. So you had to get the, um, they had a Pacific Combat Flight Simulator and they had the Battles of Britain, I think, Flight Simulator Combat. And um, I can't recall any of the others. And that's why I've been pitching in the forum that they return to that. If they're going to return to this, if they're going to take this huge leap and bring back flight simulator they said they were never going to make flight simulator again and all of a sudden bam microsoft came back and and brought it back uh and so now we're asking yeah absolutely it was and we're asking them to to bring back the combat series again and now you've got these people over there that are running things that are anti-combat and even if you say that you want combat in the forums, they'll start banning you and blocking you. They're they're that kind of radically weird 
group of people that are like this is for flight simming and it's not for combat and we're like yeah but combat has been a part of the flight simulator since you began so they're the ones forcing us all to choose to leave flight simulator and go to dcs world So we'll see what happens here sooner or later. Now they are working with a lot of uh, and allowing a lot of third-party developers to come in and create content and sell it in the marketplace. So I am hoping that somebody will release at least the weapons packs for all the military planes that we have now and submissions. They released a Top Gun add-on after the Top Gun movie came out, and I thought, well, finally, okay. If they're going to release Top Gun, how are they not going to how are they going to avoid putting weapons and, and stuff in it? And the Top Gun movie is type Cessna 152 5 miles southeast of Jetco 7300 feet. The Maverick movie. Flight following. Guys, they're talking. So the map you guys stop talking Roger so the Maverick movie the latest Top Gun movie uh, there's very little combat in it it's a uh, you know it's a uh, I don't know if you've seen it or not it's a mission based movie and because it's a mission-based movie, they managed to put no combat whatsoever in the Top Gun add-on for Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's just all flying activities, and they don't even include the mission from the movie, which is, I don't, what? So that was a huge disappointment. You can fly similar types of activities, but is there somebody new? I'm sorry, I don't have that. Uh, I don't have a screen up that that I can see if uh, people are lurking or or watching. Hello, hanging out with um, gaming extraordinaire person Nemesis Chicken here in the chat. He's an old school gamer that I have been friends with for a long time. Kind of ex-partner, partner in crime a little bit. And uh, if you're just tuning in, today is a continuation of yesterday. Um, episode 6, 6A, the weekend. This is just going to be grinding today. Not terribly exciting. I'm just going to be doing a lot of back and forth between uh, little airports today. Try to make money. We're up, at, we're up to 37000 now. I'm going to need to raise like 374 just to get the Cessna. The Skyhawk. Got some wind going on, pushing the nose up. Try to lower the throttle a little bit. But hello, I hope whomever you are, you're having a great day. <laughs> I I have I have no recollection of that, I'm sorry.
So the most high paying job so far for anybody tuning in is just, I've been doing these runs between Centennial Airport at the south end of Denver and the one I just took off from, uh, which is in Broomfield. Those are the most high paying ones, uh, 4,000 for each job. So just kind of doing back and forth between these two airports. There's a, uh, there's Denver, there's Broncos Stadium right there for anybody can make out the horse in the oops make it the horse on the seats right be above that is elitch gardens if you're from denver or if you ever been there it's off the wingtip now there's coors coors field you can kind of make Coors Field out right here. One tree, two decimal, seven, five, Kineas, two, one. Then downtown Denver. Denver approach Kineas, two, one, six, thousand, eight hundred feet. Kineas, two, one, Denver approach altimeter, two, nine, or decimal, nine, or two, continue as planned. Uh, not nearly as impressive as some place like Chicago. I mean, we have buildings here, but uh, we were talking about Becky earlier, and, you know, Becky's comment. Uh, one, two, five, decimal one, two, for Kineas, two, one. So our tall, our tallest buildings. Almost, I almost want to turn off air traffic control. Uh, so uh, I remember Becky being here and her saying, you know, our, our tallest buildings are the smallest buildings in Chicago. She was just laughing. Uh, Denver, it, you know, a little bit more impressive. We got some tall buildings. But again, that's it. I mean, that's Denver. You know, Chicago, it just keeps going and going and. I bet some of these buildings aren't even as, as tall as some of the ones out there. Yeah. Yeah, we only have a couple, just a handful of tall buildings. The place we were talking about you moving into at one time in Colorado Springs, that's actually one of the taller structures in Colorado Springs. She's just cracking up. Those Those are your buildings? X-ray. All right. Make left traffic runway three five left Kineas two one. Five minutes. Up. Thirteen minutes after the hour. Yeah, I apologize. If anybody does come in and I don't see you come in, uh, I would have to have a a YouTube live stream screen up somewhere to be able to see if there's any viewers or concurrent viewers of this and this, and it's it's buried. I have so much going on. I have to keep NeoFly open. But I, but I can. Let me see if I can move some things around here. 
and get access to that. And I've got OBS here. The tallest building in Denver, 56 floors. I'll be darned. That's it, huh? Live stream YouTube studio. Try to pull this out into its own window. Shrink it. And I can see now that we've had If I shrink it, then I can't see it. The analytics. Uh, there, there. There's one concurrent viewer. That's them. And we've had eight views. Is the Sears Tower still the tallest building in Chicago? And what's that, like 300 stories? Let's see, how tall is, how many stories is Sears Tower? Sears Tower has 110 stories. And if I'm not mistaken, that is the building featured in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, where they're up at the top looking down. Could be wrong. Oh, so earlier, you know, again, you've been mentioning that um, the graphics are are very nice for this. I'm running at uh, 1280 by 720. I don't even have it, this up as high as I can go, but then it's a bad experience. And this isn't the machine for it. But uh, this is all set to mid mid-range and I've turned a lot of other features off like bloom or lighting effects and reduced shadows try to make things run more smoothly so yeah there's there's a lot of uh, a lot more you can do with it with a better system and uh, yeah I haven't even got it up into the 4k or 8k range and because I'm streaming, I'm not taking advantage of the, uh, AMD has a technology now, super, super virtual resolution, which will, um, upscale the game to, uh, 2K, 4K, or 8K. That might be a little too much work for the processor to do while running and streaming and yada 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 that's why i'm looking forward to the you know the next system that i'm gonna get because i i would love to, i want to find one where it's like okay i want a system where i can have everything running on ultra and 60 frames a second at 8K. On three big screens. Uh, everybody's telling me I need to just skip the big screen idea and move over to virtual reality. 
and they're probably right they're like once you do vr with this you'll never go back so don't spend your time getting 8k screens when you'll have vr and and they might be right one of these days i'll see about trying it out i know that the um the vr for bridge crew was pretty amazing but yeah everybody says vr for the simulator is the way to go Let me let me start Skype. Clear to land runway three five left Kitty is two one. Oh, I see your kitty now. And there's the Cadillac. I see the link for the Cadillac. Move the screen over so I don't crash. You scored P58008 and 3D Mark 11 performance Intel Core i9. KF processor, NVIDIA GeForce RTX the 4080 and 64 bit Windows 11. That i9 is probably a screamer. How much RAM? 32 gigs of RAM. Did you not, is that 32 or did you not feel the need to go for 64? Or would, you know, it doesn't make a difference with that kind of power or no need to go to 64? memory has not been a problem well good that will uh potentially there's some room to save some money there
So do you currently have that machine? I mean, or Oh man. Card's got 16 alone. Uh are you waiting for that machine or do you currently have that machine in your possession? Possession. Because you said your other your other computer was doing the blue screen of death and you wanted to get one. So, yeah, so do you are you waiting for it? Do you have it? Okay. No, I forgot to mention earlier, but please do. I mean, when you uh, when you see Rachel and you see Betty, please tell them I said hello. Send my best wishes, and maybe one of these days I'll pop in and say hello. Maybe we can figure out. Cargo unloading in progress. Stand by, pilot. Maybe we can figure out how to do a broadcast. Transporter from dispatch. Cargo unloaded and checked. It is always a pleasure to work with you. What a nice thing to say. So this go around on the jobs board, it doesn't look like any other four thousand dollar jobs. Scroll up here, double check. Oh, there are, but those are to, to Colorado Springs. Well, it's like thirty minute flights. These are close enough. Three five, three five six, three seven. That's to the new one. At least it's to Denver. Taxing in and out of there is a pain in the ass. Uh, pain in the butt. Sorry, YouTube. Leave that out. Dispatch to pilot. The cargo being loaded is documented as fragile. Please take extra care, especially when wheels are on the ground. Transporter, loading has started. Stand by. Your cat is so cute. I love the advice. The fragile cargo looks extremely delicate. We have secured it the best we can. Please taxi with caution. I love the markings on him. He looks happy. He looks really happy. I can't imagine he wouldn't be. He looks very, very happy. And Yeah, I will not forget to close it. 
And um, you get a pushback. I haven't been doing much pushbacks, but this guy will come in here and there's back a little bit. That's good enough. You're good to go. Contact the tower for clearance. And we're heading to the north. All right, Steve, you're up. Do your job, my man. I'm now seeing that uh, Cadillac SUV. I'm checking that that out. Oh, so it oh, I missed that. So it's an EV. It's a, a 308 miles range with a full charge. 33 inch diagonal LED display capable of 9K resolution. Dual motor power. Oh, um, wow, that interior looks insane. Now I know what you mean by flying a UFO. Yeah, it's just so different now. Oh, wow. That is like driving a computer. It bears so little resemblance to what we're used to. It's got ambient lighting. I was talking about the lighting earlier. Yep, you can do ambient lighting and change the lighting in the in your in your car cockpit. That AKG studio lighting. Oh, this the 19 speaker audio system. Adaptive volume surround technology to create an immersive listening experience. I want to get a, um, I want to find a, picture of that, that screen, a front, a straight on. Can't find one at the moment. That's no big deal. That's that's impressive. Oh, you can fold the seats down. You move cargo stuff around. I don't know who, which model it was or which maker it was, but somebody was selling an SUV and uh, or a minivan and marketing to mothers and stuff, and it had a built-in vacuum cleaner. And I thought that, you know, other than having a coffee maker, which is the next thing I want in a car, it had a, it's got a built in vacuum cleaner that's built into the back bay area. 
And I'm like, now that's thinking because that's handy. That's something that's so practical. It make it makes sense. Centennial Tower Kinius two one ready for departing straight out at runway three five right. Kinius two one altimeter two <laughs> niner decimal niner two one com departing straight out approved. Cleared for takeoff runway three five right. No, I'm gonna. I was just having him taxi. I'm not gonna. Runway three five right. I I'm not gonna have him. I'm not gonna have him do the takeoff. Turn him off right now. No, no, can't trust him. <clears throat> oh, so you could, so you could put a, so you could bring a coffee maker into it and plug it in a little Mr. Coffee. That's that's it. You you that's exactly it. I said the same thing as you typed it. You can literally plug in your toaster oven into your vehicle. I love it. It's getting everything's getting so good. Pricey. I mean, I wish we could get back to uh you know, 1970s prices. The economy is completely screwed up at the moment. Yeah, you don't have to worry about the standard car adapters that we've been using all these years. <clears throat> and then the cars weren't really made for, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, it was an adapter you could get, but, you know, now they're thinking exactly that, that people are going to want plugs for things. Man. I kept him. We're so close to DIA. I think I'm going to go ahead and put in our request to land now. Centennial Tower Oops. Kinius, feet to land. I need to cancel that. I have to acknowledge it and then cancel it. Traffic runway, three, five, right, Kinius, two, one. Oops. What? Oh, I wonder how that happened. That's weird. You shouldn't be seeing that one at all. That is a glitch. That's weird. I'm looking at it now. I see what you're saying. Um, I don't know how that happened. How that is even happening. That's weird because it's closed. The screen is closed on my end. I wonder if I patched it somehow. Wow. That's the first time I've ever seen that happen. Again, all these firsts, they, I, uh, I don't, I don't. Try opening that window and closing it again. That is our AI assist. And close it. Oh, we're back. Huh. So somehow or another, when I opened it, I may have clicked the uh, pop out. So if you have multiple monitors or a bigger screen, you can pop out. Pop out windows. Well, let's cancel those landing intentions. Centennial Tower Kinius, two one cancel landing intention. Kinius Get back on course here. And now we can Denver approach Kinius, two one is type Cessna one hundred and fifty two two miles northwest of Centennial, six thousand nine hundred feet. Request flight following. Kinius two 
sure can they can do a lot these guys that are building custom setups they need that kind of ability as well uh to they're able to do some amazing things they can now put these pop outs on individual tablets or monitors or yes yeah absolutely uh if i had uh, my second monitor set up again um because this computer isn't just the best, you know, everything bogs it down. So I don't get to take advantage of a lot of that stuff. But yes, I can. I can um, pop as many screens out as I want and put them wherever I want. But again, these guys that are building these custom cockpits, they'll have, uh, they'll buy these tablets and, and s special tablets to mount. And then they can move those windows. They can move those pop outs to other windows and they can create custom cockpits. What people are doing these days is really amazing. Okay, so we're going to right there, Denver International. I don't know about that one. Uh, I know that you can do it to a tablet. There's an interface that you can get that allows you to run controls on a separate controls on a tablet for like a co-pilot. And I know that there is a program, an app you can get, which will allow you to do certain things from your phone. But I think it's more like um, for trainers. So if I was gonna, if I was in the position of trainer, I can set simulation conditions. I think from my phone or, or change things. One hundred percent certain on that. Runway 25 is an east an east west runway fly over this way a little bit then and i've got flaps up I've been thinking about going and uh, doing some flying with some real pilots. They there's a there's a guy that uh, or a group of people over at Meadow Lake Airport, not too far from here, that uh, provide flight training, and um,
Yeah. And so I've been thinking about it, and they're offering, uh, they occasionally offer specials, like $200 first, first flight special where they, you come in and they want to check your level of knowledge. They said they will discount your training depending on how much knowledge you have. And that's good because if I choose to do it, I mean, I, I know almost at the moment, I know I want to say almost everything because there are a lot of things you can't do in a simulator, like check your gas, check your water, check a pitot tube, visual inspections, you know, those kind of things. Uh, also, there's a lot of work that you do with these little slide rule devices, like E6B, they're called E6B computers. And they're basically slide rules for airplanes. And you have to know how to use these little airplane uh, computers, which isn't a, a problem. I've been watching videos and learning how to use them, but those are really handy for uh, learning how to calculate airspeed and uh, when you're flight planning, how many you can learn how many minutes by spinning the computer. Like I'm going from here to here, and it'll be one hour and forty minutes. And you can learn how to do heading corrections. Like, well, the wind is blowing this many miles per hour, and I'm going to this over here, and so I'm going to have to make these kind of corrections. So not something that I don't know how to do or, or couldn't do. And I've thought about ordering a couple of those E6Bs, so I just have them handy, so I, I learned how to do it. But yeah, other than that, I I don't know what else there is for me to learn uh, other than the FAA rules, which I, I watch videos on FAA rules all the time. So I'm learning the FAA rules. Uh, I know almost everything for visual flight training now, everything for instrument flight training, everything on the GPS, uh, and again, even the airline computers now, programming and creating my own flights, which they don't do in the real world. It's all done by engineers. When you're flying an actual airliner, you don't mess with the computer. But um, the flight engineers create all the flight plans and input them, and all you do is bring up pre-programmed automated flight plans. But I know how to do that now, too. Get into the computer and create flight plans from scratch. And that's a hoot. That gives you a real sense of accomplishment, a good feeling of accomplishment where you could do and muck about with uh, airplane, airliner, like computers, fun stuff. So I probably have 300 or 400 hours now, which isn't a whole lot in just airliner. That's a lot of the reason too why I've been creating all my own flight instruction videos is if I do go over there to, to talk to them and they're like, well, what do you know? I could say, well, I know all this, but check this out. I've actually been creating my own flight training instructionals to, to demonstrate that I know how to do it. So I've been documenting everything that I'm doing with all my live streams and stuff, but I've been making help tutorial videos and flight training videos. I can say here, you let me teach the course today and tell me what I did wrong. I'll teach the class today on any given subject.
Wow, that's a good idea. Hey, speaking of our, uh, uh, well, not speaking of, sorry, that's a dumb way to lead in. Um, but drone, are you still flying your drone? Because that thing was very impressive. You were, you were teaching it things or teaching it how to come in and land in the right areas and you still mess with your drone? And that's something you might actually, and now that I'm thinking about it, you probably get a lot of hits on doing videos like that. I watch car videos all the time, fixing things. Oh, really? Oh, that's too bad. Oh, what a drag. <laughs> it's an, an expensive toy to not be able to play with. Oh, exactly. That's perfect. That's awesome. Now that's thinking. That is the... Now I'm too slow. That is the right way to do it. Nice. I was hoping that... Um, People with drones, third-party producers with drones would start producing higher quality cities. For example, I would really like, I mean, it's pretty high quality now, but I would really like an even better, especially with a new computer, a better high quality version of Colorado Springs. And I was uh, expecting that once this came out, there would be a group of third-party people that would be out there with drones scanning and, and creating areas that were much more high quality but so far they don't seem to exist that could be something with the bean data or I'm, I don't know just gotta wait eventually in time everything gets better and better oh am I oh, this isn't the runway that I want even I'm now realizing I gotta follow this through and then take a turn and go to that runway Welcome to Denver International Airport, though.
it's high definition, but it's not like when you get down to the ground level and want to, let's say, you know, really explore things towards the ground level. Yeah, the the graphics just aren't really there. It's all maximized for being at altitude and um, everything kind of blows up, I think, when you get down to the ground. So yeah, I'm hoping that eventually somebody will make better better versions so that your ground experience will be just as amazing as your airborne. Everything kind of looks like Mad Max World sometimes on the ground. interesting that you mentioned that when i get more experience in this particular thing one of the reasons why i bought this particular career add-on is it does have live emergencies nem we have touched down so this program has the ability This program has the ability to monitor live live emergencies in your area. And so fires, traffic accidents. Uh, yeah, when I start getting up more experience in this program, it will start generating missions based on real world crap and yeah we've talked about that in the past too like um well one we used to joke about having border security because of all the border situation we're like create a live real-time one so that we can help border patrol and we can fly along the border and provide real-time feedback to a uh, border patrol and uh <laughs> and things of that nature and yeah it's getting there uh, some people have live shipping. All the world shipping is live. And some people are working on live traffic. And so what we're really arriving at here at the end of the day is uh, not a flight simulator. It's a, it's a world simulator because <clears throat> now all the weather is real, the planets to scale. They're going to get the traffic right, the shipping right. Somebody said eventually they'll do the trains. And so, yeah, it's insane. There's our... our uh, they're famous, but, you know, we're known for the, the DIA airport. It's got those peaks at the, the main terminal. This is really a creepy place, though. It really is. All the... Yeah. This, uh... Denver International Airport is a creepy, creepy place. There are videos out there documenting conspiracy theory. All the conspiracy theories revolving around this place. But if you just come here and, and walk around and look at like the murals that they've got and statues that they've got and it's super creepy they've got this horse statue when you drive in and it's blue it's a blue horse and he's got glowing eyes and uh 
so they you know they call it the devil horse the horse killed its creator when the the guy making the statue was installing it or something it it broke or it fell and it ended up killing the creator of the uh, statue then they've got all these masonic symbols all over the place they recently installed a a talking gargoyle And it's supposed to have all these underground secret facilities and tramways that go to places for you know, super VIPs. Um, to keep that load off the CPU, I have turned down all the traffic as well. Normally... Um, you can uh, they do have live airline traffic too already so if I were to turn everything on you would see all the planes that are currently at DIA coming and going but it just wreaks havoc on the CPU and all the ground crews so you can turn on all the active uh, planes and you can turn on ground crew and you can turn on road crews and so this is it with just minimum at the moment. You don't see any any planes. And if you have the proper livery packs, it does all the liveries for the airplane. So you see like, you know, Frontier, United, whomever, all their proper markings and types of planes. Let me see about turning on some of those right at the moment. So here under data or traffic. Vehicle ground density. Yeah, I've got it at nothing. Air, ground aircraft density. We'll bump it up a little bit. Worker density. So you can turn on leisure boats, road vehicles, ships and ferry. Turn on the fauna. Flora and fauna density. And then you can do generic aircraft models or, you know, and even in multiplayer, you can get people's proper livery. Um, you're under data. Yeah, live real world air traffic. Let me turn that on for a moment. now it's populating so now you see airplanes oh they where do they want us to go to park damn oh good just right here once we get parked I'll, I'll break out the drone Sorry, man. Oh, oh, I was sorry. That poor fella. Stand by, pilot. Cargo unloading. Yeah. From dispatch. Everything seems okay. The customer looks happy. Mission ended. Let's go. Normally you come in from that side over there. There's the main outdoor parking. And then the main covered parking structure. Or like four or five stories there. And 
then this is the the rooftop I was speaking of. All the peaks that we have, they have that. Uh, I don't know what they call that stuff. No. Really pretty inside. And we have a hotel built right onto it now. Looks like a pair of wings. Yes, sir. Pretty amazing. So out here too, uh, if you wanted to monitor, or you want to do a flight that's currently active, let me show you, this is pretty neat. So it, uh, it'll show you on the main menu here in a moment, um, all the active flights that are currently taking place. Let me get over to back to Denver, Kate in here. Okay. These are currently on uh, the live airport activity. What? Oh, come on. Now you're embarrassing me when I've got them watching. But maybe uh, I have to reboot. I don't know. Either way, you could normally, and uh, when it is working, see all the current activity that's going on at the airport. And if you want to fly, wanna, all you got to do is double click it and it loads whatever. Let's say there's a plane getting ready to take off to go to Orlando. And if you double click it, it loads the same flight plan into yours and you you can fly the same one uh the world is active so normally out here if you actually are paying attention um come over here where it might be more readily available and see it better so all this real, all the weather stuff, all the clouds and everything else, this is all, you can see this moving. This is all real time weather. And there are different filters you can use. So here's the, so we're looking at it with the satellite view at the moment, but here's the weather layer and I've only got clouds set, but you can set for the precipitation. So over here to where we are and you can see that the blue areas over near telluride this altitude anyway uh they're getting some precipitation over here we're kind of i know that we're currently getting some here and i'm surprised we're not getting it showing it a lot wind effects sort of filtered by runways, landmarks, cities. Why is there not the, there's the wind layer. So the wind layer for the, at a ground level, you know, or uh, what's the wind like here at ground level? Or low level winds, high level winds. So you can check out the wind patterns. crazy wind patterns up here around the world so yeah it it's an earth simulator
it is a truly an uh, an amazing achievement of epic proportions. Listen, we were parking 25. We landed on, came in and we turned, I think we landed on this one, 25. Yep, we landed here and had a taxi here. So I'm probably somewhere in here. Kind of need to be in the same general area as I was for the rear thing to work with it. Yeah, so they're able to, people are able to grab, um, because of the way this thing is built, to use data and incorporate data into a simulator to generate things yeah that's why people are able to do what they're doing now with these live emergencies and real world real world uh road conditions uh planes boats yada 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 Reconnect to the that. Let's see what jobs. Ah, good. Another four thousand one or two. That is the best paying one by far. And that was just that that's the, the one we were we have been using. Transporter from dispatch. It's a sensitive cargo mission today. When you check the payload in the flight plan, please release the parking brake to start. Transporter, loading has started. Stand by. <laughs> That's plenty of fuel. Flight crew, be advised the fragile cargo looks extremely delicate. We have secured it the best we can. Please taxi with caution. This is going to be a heavy flight. They want us at 528 pounds by 29. And we're right at almost at the at the maximum. I spawn back in, I gotta turn everything back on. All right. Yeah, it blows my mind. I thought there's, there's, you know, with the, there would be no way to do anything like this without something like that you have, a computer like that. That they've managed to get this so optimized that you could, you know, still enjoy it on a level like my, you know, a level like this. This is just a off the shelf Dell. And um, when I was uh, applying for the alpha, they wanted 
computers of all levels from the minimum requirements requirements to the maximum so i bought something that's just a little bit over was required for minimum requirements and um And it blows my mind that I'm still able to enjoy this. And I, let me turn off some of that stuff again. I don't freak out the processor. I would love having this. I love having this one on, but again, it eats up a lot too. The road vehicles, so I can actually see things on the highway. And I can go back into data and turn off real world air traffic. They do have multiplayer. It is a big MMO ultimately. So usually every Friday they do a, a fly in where the de, um, the developers and the well people that are related to the developers every Friday they do a you know a, a flight somewhere around the world uh on the world and so you know you get dozens and dozens and dozens of planes in the air at once and you can see them all if you have multiplayer turned on here yeah yeah you're right yeah plus obs plus streaming plus yeah These German developers, man, are Asobo are just the coolest cats in the whole world. Just geniuses. What they have done, what we wanted, what we expected as a community, the flight sim community, and what we got, normally what you want and what you get <laughs> are not even close you know you want everything and then you get nothing this was com my first time ever where what we wanted and what we got didn't we just didn't even expect that we would have anything close to this and so that's why we think Asobo they're When you're working with these big airports, the taxiing instructions are hilarious. Look at this. Using taxiway Bravo for Alpha Alpha Hotel Charlie November Echo Delta Mike Cross Runway Eight Alpha Cross Runway Eight Romeo Eight Romeo Romeo One Kinias Two One. And you have to be able to repeat that back. And now you understand why I'm not so interested in getting into one of these flight sims, uh, VAT sims that uses real people doing the air traffic control. Because not only do you have to listen to that, you have to have a knee pad and you have to be able to write it that fast. And then you have to be able to repeat it that fast. So yeah, taxing, hold short of runway 26 using taxiway B4AA. Well, and then you got to do it in or what, the airplane language. Bravo 4, Alpha Alpha Hotel, Charlie November, Echo Delta. Um, what M is, Mike. Cross one way, uh, eight alpha, cross runway, eight, Romeo, eight, Romeo, Romeo, one. Ah. I am making it a goal this year to not be such a chicken shit. I did it again. I used a swear word on one of my live streams. Sorry, YouTube. Um, not to be such a chicken. 
and uh, go on to one of the uh, live servers, live air traffic control, and uh, learn how to play with those folks. So. Hey, Chris. Nim's here. Hello. I don't know. My mic's got such setup, you might not be able to hear you. You have to come over here and get closer. You have to be just like right here where it tunes everything out. Hello. Chris came in to, to mop my floor. Oh, good. He's just trying to get you close. Yes, that's the truth. And normally, uh, you have to use, if I'm, if I wasn't using Steve here to do all the taxing, you either have to use the drone to go around and look at all of these runway markers, or they have tools out there. This is one of my favorite tools. Let me show it to you. It's called Sky Vector. Have another minute or so. Sky vector. And that should be popping up on your screen here in just a moment. So this is a program called Sky Vector that provides real world, real time, same kind of thing. Anything going on in real time in aviation it will show up on here like uh, emergency areas or areas you shouldn't fly in or whatever. Sometimes it even shows you when concerts are going on in certain areas. It's, it's a really amazing program, but it's uh you can use it to set up flight plans and have them create flight plans for you, or you can create your own flight plans. For example, we're going from Denver Internet, let me clear this flight plan. We're going from uh, Aden to KBJC. So that's currently the flight plan we're going to do 21 miles. Okay. Um, but this is what I was going to show you. The uh, here's the here's the Denver airport, and if you don't know. They give you all these instructions to cross this runway and take this taxiway and take that taxiway. This provides you all the airport diagrams. Not only that, it, it provides you all the proper instrument approach procedures and all of the terminal arrival procedures. So it gives you all the, the proper procedures to approach and take off from the airport. But let me pull up the diagram. you're seeing what I'm seeing good yeah so here okay so we were here there's runway 25 we were in parking here they were telling us to come out to you know here's AA so everything you can see all the the taxiways this is taxiway G taxiway B4 so they were telling us to come out to like Bravo 
Bravo 4, Bravo 3. These are all the Bravos. The B7, B8, B9. The M's. So this is what you use normally to translate what they're saying if you don't know where you're at and you can plot, plot your route based on what they're telling you. And again, when you're doing professional flying, here's the approach procedures. This is for on an ILS. Yeah, this is ILS. So ILS or localizer runway 07 approach procedures and learning how to um, read these things. These boilerplate. So the localizer DME and the channel 115. Uh, that's the localizer. So uh, to get my computer to handshake with the ground computer, I will put this into the nav computer for an um, mostly automated landing. It shakes hands and it, and it brings you down to the runway. The approach, uh, approach course of the runway, the elevations, the type of lighting that the airport has, missed approach procedure, the most frequently used frequencies for the area. little map of alternate miss uh, missed approach fix tells you to you know to go out to certain points in the air uh, an overhead view of the runway you come in through the fat end of the arrow come down to the runway here's the runway here these are all the waypoints to the runway and if we were to miss landing and we have to do a missed approach to take off and then it's telling us to come down here to tune to this VOR here. I mostly use it for the side view here. So when doing an ILS approach, ah, ah, okay, I'm sorry, I just now saw that, that you know a lot of this. Yeah, I use this one the most. Uh, I like the side view, So here's my waypoints. Here's X marks the spot. Pirates know that one. And this uh, is where you press your approach button. And this is where it does the handshake and it'll take you down to the runway here. Same kind of thing, missed approach. All the different categories for weights. Good stuff. Yeah, I didn't think I'd ever learn how to read any of these or use any of these either, and it's it's fantastic. Love it. See, there's something going on over here in real world. They don't want you to fly. It's a, what does it say, flight hazard. And then you give the, the 12th, the 5.11. Valid for 357 days. And the Sky Vector also provides you, this is the world VFR map, but if we were doing um, uh, instrument flying and we wanted to use the instrument flying maps, there's the world low map. So we just have all the uh, highways. We don't have to deal with any of the ground stuff. We still get our terrains. So that's world low. And here's the world high map. So normally when I'm doing airliners, I'm creating things that are specifically routed along highways and VOR points. I don't really ever fly free flight, meaning I don't ever just say, I'm gonna go this way. I'm normally plotting everything along these particular highways in the sky. But once you come off a highway like this Victor here, and approach a runway, then you have to use those other charts. Um, let me show you. Um, 
an arrival chart. Those are neat. Back to Aiden. The arrival charts are hoot. Oops. For the um yeah. Let's take let's see what we get with this one. Uh oh, Steve's taking off. Should have been paying attention. Uh, learning how to use these to, to for uh, it's not really a, a good example. I'm gonna find another one. That's a departure chart, but it's very similar. So the idea is that. This one is only for coming in, in from this direction. Okay, but normally you've got ones that show you a lot more connectors coming in. But this is the idea that um, you're flying into these star points and this is the highway that takes you in reverse. This one's for a departure. But you leave a runway and then you're supposed to follow this out and follow it out this way. But the approaches are very similar. It's just reversed. You know, you're coming in from a point, you follow it down to a star point, and then, you know, take the off-ramp down to a runway. So they have one of these charts for every direction you're coming in at, you know, from the north, south, east, or west, and sometimes multiples. And so when you're building your flight plans, it's it's entering in all of your points really really fun stuff yeah I can see how they would you want you to know how to identify restricted airspaces for sure Oh, it's, um, it was tough to get my head around and it was a lot to learn. And if you don't know what you're looking for, you literally have to go through every one of those PDFs. Um, if I wasn't taxing already, I would show you one of, again, one of the things that we never asked for, for Microsoft Flight Simulator. But when we got it, we're like, oh my Lord, we can't believe you did something like that. They programmed in all of those charts into Microsoft Flight Simulator. So from the main menu, from the main menu and on the main screen, if you set up an instrument flight, you can just scroll through and scroll down through the list, on, basically scroll through the charts, and it will show you all of the it will display all the proper chart information right on the world map. So I remember when I was first doing it, I would spend hours going through every single chart to try to find the chart that I needed. To, you know, let's say come from the south of the springs to go to Denver. And if I didn't know, I didn't know which one to use. So you have no choice but to go through them all. And the simulator makes it easy. You just go, I'm coming from here to here. And uh, and then it says, well, what approach do you want? I don't know. And so you just cycle through them and it shows you all the proper approaches. I mean, it's incredible. You know what? It's about, you know, I don't care. I don't I honestly don't care about the mission that much. I'd be more happy to take the time to show you something like that below this mission eh. 
<laughs> this was a four thousand dollar mission, though. Eh, I'll have to show it to you some other time. But yeah, it does it. <laughs> it does all that, and it's it's. But something we never asked for when we got it, we're like, that is revolutionary. Nobody, nobody has anything like that. Not even close. This is a lot of the reason why I don't come to big airports. It takes forever. It takes forever to taxi. Taxi speeds, I don't know if you've flown recently at all, but when I was, when we were growing up, if you remember taking flights anywhere, once the plane landed, it would take forever to taxi to get back to the terminal because back then they had to follow strict, strict taxiing speeds. And the rule is you don't taxi any faster than you can walk. And it was pretty much the same for airliners and you might remember that you might remember sitting for a half an hour just to go from the runway to the terminal um steve's taxiing he's going fast normally i try to follow taxi speed and it's boring but but anyway now i've been taking uh i've taken some flights within the last year or two they just fly. They fly right off the runway and they just haul at, uh, they go very, very fast now. And because it's, you know, it's so busy these days, you know, there's so many flights going on and it's so busy that it takes no time at all. I'm, I'm almost scared sometimes. I'm like, I can't believe they're taxing this fast. The thing that keeps me grounded though and keeps me uh afraid to go actually learn how to do this is um some days i'm trying so hard to do everything by the book and like the real world you know in two seconds something can go wrong i'll do something wrong or something will go wrong or and um doesn't happen too much anymore, but the craziest crap will happen and I will crash. And, uh, and that keeps me from wanting to do it in the real world because, you know, when I'm trying to be perfect, stuff still goes wrong. And, you know, I tend to be kind of an accident prone person as it is and it frightens me to death uh, I am more of I am more afraid of flying now than I ever was and it's because I know stuff now where I was ignorant in the past and you know wasn't afraid of flying Even on airlines, I mean, I was just like, oh, I have no fear of flying in airlines. I would, uh, my cousin Jake, he would lose his mind flying. He's one of these persons that he couldn't handle it. And one day he finally just overcame it, which is remarkable. Some people just can't. They can't control themselves on an airplane. They lose their minds. They're so afraid. And now I'm afraid. There you go.
and now I watch um a lot of the FAA videos for safety and training and and uh, the FAA crash a lot of there's, there's a lot of videos out there that document airplane crashes and they try to walk you through the procedures of what the flight crew was doing you know what, what went wrong you know what what caused these crashes and um Surprisingly, the FAA has recently concluded one of the main reasons for uh, a large number of crashes these days is pilots don't spend enough time actually flying in the simulator, and they don't spend enough time actually flying the plane themselves. They're trained from day one to do everything that's programmed and pre-programmed. They don't mess with the computers they don't you know they're literally just like glorified you know um babysitters they babysit the airplane they're responsible for helping the thing take off a little bit but even now they've automated those procedures i've been looking at new planes and they have fully automated now it's like this steve they've got steves on the aircraft now that will do all the taxing they'll do all the it will I would say the near for takeoff runway two six Kineas, two one. near misses are probably bad programming for one. I know that there are professional pilots out there that do fly manually. I I've, I watch them on YouTube, and they come and play in the simulator, and they're real world pilots. And uh, they 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 say you know a lot of the time they will fly manually. That could be some or. You know, changing speeds in the air, something causes you to slow down or speed up and they put you on a vector closer to somebody else, who knows, um, that kind of thing. But when things go wrong, they, they lack a lot of uh, experience to deal with bad situation. And if anything I'm getting out of this is, is learning that. Yeah, when you set things to real world uh, weather and conditions, um, it's been very interesting. Micro bursts are a trip. Steve's got a wide enough runway, but he's still, I can see him still drifting to the right here. Keeps going, I'm gonna pull him. Line it up, man. What is your problem today? Transporter from dispatch. Fly safe and remember to watch your landing. So yeah, they have Steve's to do everything for them now. They program it in and they, they really don't Listening to these real world guys, they're like, yeah, for the most part, we don't do anything. We sit there and we babysit the plane in case something should go wrong. But other than that, they just come down to their computer and they uh, make sure that the proper flight is in there and switch on the AI and sit back. That's right. You know, I, I should do that. I should just start calling Steve Connie. Denver Tower Kinias two one continue for south departure. Which, in a weird way, kind of brings me back to asking that question earlier. Well, 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 what are you doing in Star Citizen then if you're not doing that stuff? 
if you're not doing missions for money in Star Citizen, what are you what are you doing now? What what's the what's the point? I've thought about that. I've thought about going to look for training jobs to do something like that to where I'm, I, yeah, where I can remote pilot. Um, most of the drones around the world, that's how all the Air Force and Army and every, all the military services, that's exactly what they're doing. There is no point. That's unfortunate. Yeah, there are there are lots of jobs out there for people to do remote flying. But that that means I I do. I would have to go now get all my real world certifications. And you actually have to have as as far as I know, you, you would still need to have all your flight Training your time, your hours, your cross countries, and still have done all your. I don't know. I, I, I honestly, honestly don't know enough about enough about that. You know, who knows if uh, what it's like for people who are massive flight simulator geeks who can go in there and like, yeah, I can, I can teach the classes on everything. I can do everything. Steve's got enough elevation now I can take over. I, I remember flying with you last time and the thing that I'm the thing that I remember the most the Bravo airspace, is was watching you do a transition you know um, that they have that technology now to where you can do a transition from space to ground you know that Features that we've always wanted for Star Trek Online, but mm, don't have. There's a group of guys out there working on Starship Simulator at the moment. And if you haven't seen it, I would definitely look for some videos on it. And they're taking it beyond... Uh, they're not related to Ubisoft or anything like that. But they're taking it all the way beyond Bridge Crew now. They're doing what you were, what you were talking about with the old Pirates game, where everybody could do different things around the ship and everybody's contributing to the larger picture overall. So there is a group of guys out there working on Starship Simulator and it's going to do just that. If you're in engineering, you can be working on engineering stuff, fixing things, doing all your engineering things from engineering while people are on the bridge operating things. And you can walk around the entire starship <clears throat> and eventually they're going to work in combat but right now it's all about exploration uh, and eventually I'm sure they'll add all that other stuff in there you know like mining and they'll 
they'll, they'll start taking it to the star citizen level then but right now they're just really trying to focus on getting it to where a large group of people can operate a starship and it's wow I think one of the biggest worst business decisions ever was Ubisoft or whatever license agreement they had uh, to stop making bridge crew that was the greatest Star Trek game that I've ever played in my opinion hands down the greatest Star Trek game I've ever played in my entire life and uh, for them to have walked away from it and not kept building on it and done the same thing not tied into the new series and been ready to go into the new series and create content for it and just what a what a bunch of chowder heads but occasional all the servers are pretty much dead and no And be quest flight following. Squawk seven one two one. Squawk seven one two one. one. And because of that, people aren't playing it anymore. And so they managed. So they managed to pretty much kill off the community and it, and it's now it's even hard to find people to play with no no I have been uh no I haven't watched any of the new Star Trek series I do pay attention to all the reviews and things that people are talking about it since I'm on Twitter and it what they're doing seems amazing and some of the, the scenes I've seen with massive numbers of ships and combat and you know, um, I heard Picard is one of the best things they said ever created. They said it's one of the, the it's it's what fans have always wanted for the next generation crew to to reunite again, and eventually I'll watch it and I'll probably fall in love with it. But everybody's still real, they're still real jerks right now because of the, all the politics, but. It seems that they've made everybody happy. Strange New World is making everybody happy. And that's good. I'm, I'm happy for the community. But yeah, I saw a shot recently uh, where I guess the Borg had taken over a bunch of starships. Yeah. Yeah, I knew that they did, that they were doing it. Um, that's what I was saying at the start of our conversation. They're doing that, but they're still not doing it the way that that I had ever envisioned to where it was more tied in to where you're a part of it. That, that, that the people in the community have to have played it before the writers can start working on the next episode. Maybe one of these days still. You should tell me that's way ahead of uh you're way ahead of your time, man. So yeah, I saw a scene where supposedly the Borg had I'm not sure what was going on. But there were like a a hundred a hundred starships in a shot, and there's a uh, somebody flying through all these starships and shooting them at the same time mind-blowing so I am still happy that um, we're we're going back to the airport that we were at earlier in the day hello Thank you for tuning in, even 
taking a minute out of your day to check out something like this. I am just grinding away today, flying back and forth between airports, trying to make money. It's going to take a lot of money to uh, get new planes and uh, to get the experience so we get new types of missions. We've opened up a few more missions, but none of them have actually popped up yet. We qualify for new missions now. Um, and we are going over here, this airport, ABJC. We're getting close enough. I can call it in. Okay. Make straight in this time. Get this out of the way here. I haven't tried to see if Steve will take over and do a landing, but I don't I don't trust him at this point. Or <clears throat> what I mean by that is turning letting the AI switching on the AI once we get landing clearance. So that's all I'm doing today is just uh, just grinding away missions. So it's going to be a while until I can get the nicer planes. Have full flaps. There we go. I'm bleed off some speed by holding the nose up here. So welcome to this is Broomfield, Colorado, and it's northwest of Denver, not too far. Well, thank you. Normally when somebody says you greased Taxi something. And shut down your I always thought greasing something meant that you messed it up. Like when you say something like, shall I grease them now, sir? You know, you're gonna, gonna take them out. So when she says you greased the landing, in my mind, I'm like, oh, I messed it up. But her greasing the landing is a, a good thing. Our vector, our vector, Victor, that's so funny. Um, on Netflix right now, they have the airport movies or the airplane movies, not the comedy, the airplane movie. But they have the, um, 
you know, like the airport, airport 1975 with Charlton Heston or Jack Lemon or one of those. And I get it now. Now I understand why the airplane movie came out when it did and, and why it was so popular and why it was so darn funny. Because from 1974, like for like three years or four years in a row, every year there was an airport movie or airplane movie, an airplane disaster movie. So there's three in a row. There's like airport 1975, airport 1974, airport 1976 or whatever. Either way, for a, sh- for a period of time, America was getting continuous airport airplane disaster movies. And so I was, I was too young at the time, really, to know anything like that, you know, unless my folks were taking us to the movies. And I, I kind of remember one of them, you know. But now I understand that, you know, why somebody would want to make the comedy ones based on that one. Yeah. So if you're interested and you remember any of those old movies, they're they're all on Netflix right now. You will have to excuse me for um, a few minutes. I have been at this since, uh, what, eight? Eight in the morning. So we've been at this for a couple hours now, and I need to stand up and stretch for a little bit, and I need to uh, go get some coffee and um, use the facilities. So I apologize if you're just tuning in. But yeah, I'm going to need like a a 15 minute break or so. So if I don't see you later, Nem, I want to order from dispatch. Cargo unloaded and checked. It is always a pleasure to work with you. Thank you. Uh if I don't see you, uh it was great seeing you this morning. Ready for engine start. And if I do see, yeah, I'll be back in in a in a few minutes. But yeah, I need to get up out of this chair and move around for a little bit, or I'm gonna blow up. And uh, I I had better put up a uh, a text thing saying I'm on break. So I am on break five ten minutes. I better change this to fifteen. Do that. It'll show up better if I'm on this screen. It doesn't read any. I'm glad. I was really glad to see you, and I'll I'll be talking to you in uh, in Skype. Okay. The background. didn't take oh there we go okay there now we're all squared away <clears throat> yeah that'd be nice all right, good seeing you, and I will uh, hopefully see you soon. And if you're just tuning in, um, I apologize, but yeah, I need a break, and I will see you shortly. So please excuse me.
All right, I'm coming back, making my way back. I'm not here yet, getting situated. But it won't be long now. Oh. Oh, I definitely needed that break. And it seems somebody's there watching. Hello. I will be back at it in just a moment here. For somebody sneeze. Bless you. Bless you again. Christine's in there sneezing her head off. Poor thing. All right. I had a quick little snack. Got some more coffee. And we had just finished up about four hours worth of flying. And we're back up close to 50. Let's see here. Fifty one thousand. So still in the market, the plane market, which one is the plane market here? I really would like to get a Cessna Skyhawk with the G one thousand. I don't see any for sale right at the moment. There were two earlier. And those were over a hundred thousand icon. That's nice. One hundred eighty-eight thousand just for the icon. So it's probably not. That was not necessarily practical. But what I should be doing is saving up for some of the emergency vehicles that we might need. We we're going to need a helicopter for sure at some point. is a 65 million we're gonna need 65 million to get our airbus that's insane we're gonna need a float <clears throat> 283,000 <clears throat> the beaver's a nice plane 395,000 So that's what today is about, dear viewer. It's just about. <coughs> oh, hello, you're still there. <coughs> um, uh, it won't take that much more cargo, the Cessna. But what it does have is it's got the autopilot suite. It's got the G1000 uh, G, uh, glass cockpit system with the GPS. And, um, but it's called the, it's got all the nice auto pilot features, which would make some of these just the daily grind stuff like this stuff, um, be nicer. Not that I don't mind flying it all the time, but sometimes you just want to let the autopilot. And I can't trust Steve to do it, so. All right, let's see what kind of jobs we have available now. It's the priciest one here. No $4,000 jobs. Three, three, six, three, nine. Now this is it. What is this? Bring 203 pounds of flowers to Fort Collins, Loveland. That's that's going to be a longer jump. It's not that far, but it's. What is that? 
I didn't realize it was that close from here. Um, it's only 33 miles. In the Springs, yeah, I'm so used to flying out of Colorado Springs that that's a that's quite a jump. But from here, where we're at, I guess not at all. Yeah, let's take that, and we'll go to. Uh, I've never flown to um, Fort Collins, Loveland here. So this will be a first. We will take that one. From dispatch. You must deliver express packages before the deadline. Don't waste time. Oh, don't waste time. They want those magazines and... We will load the time deliveries as fast as we can to get you on your way. 28 minutes after the hour. So, a belated PPP. Sounds like they're ripping open boxes. Flight crew, be advised. The timed service cargo is now all on board. You are free to taxi. Okay. So let's get back over here. Shut down the window. I can hear. Select. Continue. And start our engine. I think last time we did this last time. Well, both batteries are on. Switch, switch over. Fuel. What am I overlooking? Off and on again. Not get any oil pressure, not get anything. Hmm. I have had this happen, uh, the G one thousand is a, um, it's a it's a, a digital screen. The G one thousand uses a, it's the Garmin one thousand, and it's a a digital screen system. Um, the Cessna Skyhawk. Uh, I believe that is one all, all the so you're gonna see um instead of all the dials, we'd have a like that car you were looking at last screens. I've had this happen in the past where if we sit, if the simulator sits too long, it will do this. It, it becomes unresponsive, but I just want to make sure that it's the simulator and not me. <clears throat> and with VR, I don't know. Um, I, um, I'm imagining so. I've never, I've never done VR. That's the brake. Doesn't want to turn over though. Oh well, we'll have to uh, just have to eat it. And in a case like this, in the past, all I can do is go out to the uh, the main menu or try to reset. That will, that will probably it might blow the job, but that's okay. <clears throat> Stuff happens.
Transporter, your deadline will expire in five minutes. Hurry up. Tick tock, tick tock. Ooh, you... Sorry, but time is up. Okay, so it canceled the mission. That's fine. It... At least we're back in here. Okay. So let's go back out to our jobs again and see what time is up. She was she was mad. Let's see if it canceled that job. Yeah, this is available now. This is one of those ones where hook the banner then go to waypoint one it this will require something i don't know if we need another plane for this and yeah we'd have to go back out to the main menu i think you do you have to go get a different plane for this uh, uh. yeah this is from the career add-on from uh called neo fly <clears throat> available but again if we go back out to the main menu we'll, uh, let me show you what i mean I've seen it out there in the main menu. There is an advertising plane. So I think you have to have it selected first before you can choose that job. I don't believe it would just let us take that one. It's got to have a special hook on it. While I'm out here, I can also quickly demonstrate what I was talking about earlier. If you come over here and well, let's say we set up a flight from Denver, Colorado Springs, or wherever. Yeah, let me put in KCOS. Okay, so in the real world, I was talking about you would have to look at all the charts to, to find the proper route, real world route for going from there to there. If you come over here and you set this thing to instrument flight rules, low altitude airways, it immediately sets up what it determines to be the best way for you to do it. Let me find, actually, let me find one that's a, a little further away, like Missouri, KCMO, gives us a little bit more room. Kansas City, Missouri. Ooh. Okay, it, I'm doing it wrong. KCMI. There it is. Oh, that's university. Whatever. University of Illinois Willard. <laughs> okay, whatever. So you see now here, it's showing three routes that you can choose from. And these are all based off of those charts. Okay, so it's saying this is the one it's offering this up is the best route. Just go straight, straight. If we had to go to Colorado Springs first, they're recommending this route because it takes you all the way south. Or if there was any, say, between here and here, there's bad weather, there's a good reason why you might want to fly south first. Same reason. You might want to fly north first on this one and then head out that way. So it, it knows all those routes. And as we get closer to the airport that we're going to land at here, if you can also come in here and pick your arrival in this case, none, or your approach, okay? So for every one of those charts that we were looking at, I 
You know, see how that would be the wrong one, or it would shoot us out real far out here first before coming in. Different runway. All right, so in a case like that, this one ended up being not being the best example because it didn't show you all the arrivals to scroll through. Let's go back to this. Set this. Denver has a ton of them. All right, so yeah. Every one of those PDFs under arrivals was list, is listed here. All right, and instead of opening up every PDF, if you click one, it'll immediately show you, it'll create the same thing. So that PDF, those charts that we're looking at, there's the chart, creates it for you. Go to this one, okay, flash. Right, so if we were coming from the south, that would be the way that we would go. By the way, I think you get what the point I was trying to make now. <laughs> and now we never asked for this. We never asked for SIDS and STARS to be put in the simulator and they put it in here and we went nuts. Because this saves hours and we never thought that, that they would want to take the time to create a system like this. It's fantastic. Okay, now I said I wanted to do the advertising mission, but I believe you have to have the advertising plane. I saw one in here at one point. I've been 152. It's, yeah, Neofly Banner Toe. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Did it again. Such a loser. Sorry, Nim. I'm so sorry. It's all happy again. Get giddy and thinking about it. So what I did here is I set up a a flight plan from TLC here. All right. So here is a, a flight plan, Colorado Springs to Denver. And over here, normally it's set to visual flight rules and direct. So it's gonna create just a straight line between Colorado Springs and Denver. But in the if you're doing a flight plan and you're doing instrument flying, you would have to file a flight plan. You still have to anyway, but okay. But the instrument flight rules for going from there to there, they would want you to come out over here to this point and then go to Denver. Well, I don't know. But now all those PDF charts that we were looking at for arrivals, they're all here. That's what I was talking about. So if we were to go, if I was to go back to Sky Vector and drag down and show you all that list of PDFs again, they all have the same names. Allies 7. Alley 3, Alley 16, okay? So if we were to click one of these, there. So Alley, Alley 7 is a chart. So if we were coming from Wyoming, this is the chart we'd want to use. So obviously it's not ideal from going from Colorado Springs all the way up to Wyoming and then coming back to Denver. But if we were in... Wyoming and over at least over here somewhere, this would be the chart that we would want because it's got the our um I call these off ramps. We've got the proper off ramps down to down to the airport. Let's look at another one here. We'll do clash. Oh say. Okay, so excuse me. So <clears throat> the class chart facilitates flights coming from the east. So you see the green starts here. So flights coming from the east, they would want to use the class chart. Or for whatever reason, yeah, 
they're coming from southeast. It comes up here and it takes them into Denver this way. Let me look at another one here. Or the flat, flat set. Okay, the flat set is for facilitating flights coming in from the Salt Lake territory coming this way. Laws. Those facilitates flights coming in way over here. This one is you could use for Colorado if you had to fly to Kansas first. But that's what I was trying to say is uh, instead of reading through all the charts to find the, the right one, you just quickly scroll through these and it displays all the chart information like that. Not only that, it does your approach. So as we get closer, we can set up approaches for specific runways. Those are all the charts too. Localizer 35, that's this one. It's, it's just a really wonderful system the way they've got it set up. It's, it's fantastic. <clears throat> then I was pointing out that this plane in here, I said I wanted to do this air tow advertising and if I type in 152 for the Cessna 152, I now have this plane in my menu, and it's brand new. The 152 Neofly Banner Tow. And that's what, we're, that's what I wanted to do in that mission that was available. We're supposed to have a plane like this because it's got a hook on it or a banner tow, and we could do advertising. So let's go ahead and pick it. And hopefully... Once I set back up at uh, the airport we were at, or where we were, ABJC, that's where we uh, were. we there or were we at Denver? I'm thinking we're here. There's some parking. Fill this. Put us back to visual flight. Yeah, basically like that. <clears throat> yeah, basically those are, actually what those are showing are kind of like the on-ramps and the off-ramps. So, you know, from the runway to the on-ramp or off-ramp, and then beyond those would be the highways. All right, and they, when we pull off, they've been parking us over here. respawn in there and then let's go back to our jobs and see if we can still get that tow job oh job okay it's still here let me wait for myself to spawn in there i can set it up beforehand but i'll try the current aircraft is not designed for this job we can lend you one no 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 i i picked it let me wait until we're fully spawned in, I guess. I wonder what the message would say. Still loading up. All right, we're spawning. Let's see what we get now. Turn off aircraft is not designed for this job. It is. We can lend you one. Hmm. I would, I don't know. I would have to watch a video. I don't think then. I do have the proper plane. Well, I want to try doing one of these missions anyway. I don't care. I want to know how to do these. Uh, I want to know how to do these. 
So now they put it up here as the That the Neo flight it is the one we have selected. Whatever. Okay. So some so I guess after we take off, we're supposed to go to a waypoint and that's supposed to connect us. It's Or we're supposed to fly by it and grab it somehow. Fuel line already. Her map say say anything and our little lady hasn't come on to talk to us a moment I'm in the right plane. Hmm. <laughs> So it doesn't tell us what to do or I've done something wrong that glitched Screen is glitched. Everything is broken. Bob Dylan. Okay, now we have something showing up here. It says we're supposed to at least go over here. Advertising waypoint. Job banner toe. Okay, well, let's get in there and see what happens. Ground Kinia's two one ready to taxi south departure with call. Right, right, right. Taxiing hold short runway tree zero right using taxiway Lima Echo Kinias two one. But we don't get an altitude or anything like. Well, I will know more I guess when we get in the air. I'll sweat it. And Steve is ready to go. So let's let me minimize this map a little bit. So keep it on the screen, but not big. Right. We need to head south.
Bottoms up. What time is it? Oh, top of the hour. Man, that half hour flew. Still bottoms up, whatever. Cheers. I don't know. Are you you shouldn't be seeing that jobs window. You should you should be seeing everything fine. On OBS it looks like everything is correct at the moment. Cheers. It's just Steve taking us out to out to the runway. He does taxi fast. We've got to go down to the far end. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> so somebody's dog got loose in our neighborhood while I was on break. And, uh, I'm not sure exactly what type it was like a a pointer or a setter one of those kind of dogs real hyper good boy i mean very nice came right up and but one of the <laughs> all of our cats fortunately were inside <laughs> but one of the neighbor cats loves to come and visit and he's kind of a pain in the butt but this dog Wanted to, Kitty is two one ready at runway tree zero right departure to the south. He wanted to play and the cat who two one altimeter, two niner decimal niner, two wind calm departure to the south approved. The neighbor cat wanted nothing. Turn this down. The neighbor cat wanted nothing. Nothing to do with this dog. And that just made the dog want to play more. The neighbor cat ran back to his house. And then that just, we, we tried getting the dog under control, you know, calling it, but it's not our dog. So, you know, hyper little thing. So he went chasing after the neighbor cat. I've never seen that cat run so fast in my life. And then the cat went up a tree because the dog was, you know, still chasing it and jumping at the tree. So we, we tried calling him off a few times, <laughs> but that puppy just wanted to find a way to get to that cat. Anyway, he finally lost interest and ran off. We, uh, he didn't have any tags. There was nothing we could do. Christine being ex humane society wanted to, uh, you know, call it in or hold him. But we have too many of our own cats around here. And so we just said, you know, let it go. He'll find his way home. And um, we did see a, a Humane Society vehicle in the area shortly. Or just a little while ago. Um, so somebody called it in. But too, too dang funny. Um, it's 
fly south now and see if uh, this mission will continue. I hope I didn't glitch it, but again, um, it's a learning curve. So whether it did or did not, it's uh, whatever. There's south. Southeast. Okay. So we're supposed to fly that way until we reach that NeoFly marker on our map. oldest cat tiger are uh finally passed away but we still have we still have gg oliver calvis handsome and queenie we still have five cats and um again just by sheer luck they all happen to be inside normally at that time of morning they, they love being outside and um they don't, they don't really get along too well with that neighbor cat I was talking about, but he loves coming over here. Mostly, I think, just to beg for food. But he loves coming out and hanging out with, with our cats, but they don't really like him too much. All of our cats get along with each other just fine. Yeah. Five. And uh, for a while there, Nem, we had seven. Because... One of them was a baby mama, and she was here, and she ran away. She just, uh, she was very feral to kind of begin with, but she felt comfortable enough to have her babies here. So, but whenever she had the opportunity, she would just take off, and somebody hit her. They were, some people found her and were cool enough to look at her tag and call us. We had a tag made for her. And so they called us and we went and picked her up and um, that was sad. So baby mama's gone. We didn't have a name for her. That's all she was is baby mama. So she showed up in the middle of winter on our porch and had her kids on our porch. All the cats, for whatever reason, love our house. This is like cat central. It was like Tom and Jerry in the middle of the night. All the cats are here, man. They're, they're they have a nightclub outside or something, and they're always here. Tower Kitties two one frequency change. Denver approach Kitties two one is type five miles south of Jetco six thousand five hundred feet. Request flight following. Yeah, she was good. Another sad story. Another cat just showed up here. Another, another cat just showed up here one day and decided to make our house its house, and it was beautiful. She was a beautiful white cat. We called her Bowie because she had two different colored eyes, and she was skittish as all get up. And for she wanted to stay here and stay on the porch and it took her a long time to get comfortable like coming inside. But she had something wrong with her internally. And all of a sudden just one day started bleeding everywhere. No idea what was wrong with her took her in and yeah she had had a she had a lot of internal problems so um she passed away that was sad she was so pretty and when you know we get her calmed down a really really lovely cat so many cats have come here just to in the past seemingly just to pass away they feel comfortable here 
I don't see our advertising thing anywhere. This mission might be shot. I think it is, or we would see something. I think they get a good vibe. You know, they, they feel it that we're cat lovers. Plus all the other cats in the area, they probably marked everything enough that they're telling all the other cats, hey. Yep, there you go. So we're supposed to be right on top of it and there's nothing here. Well, that's a drag. I was really wanting to try this. Maybe next time. Well, since that is glitched and I'm going to have to start over anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take us back to the main menu. And since you're still here, I want to show you the F-35. I suppose it could have been above me, but I'm already, you know, out. But I didn't see it as I was heading in. You know, I thought I would have saw something. I guess this is from Halo. They gave us to this for free, the Halo Pelican. I love this one, the Honda Jet. I'll have to show you that in a minute. That's $5 million, but it's so grand. Okay, I think we need the B version here. And I'll just put us here in the parking lot. And so the whole sim glitch. It's just lagging, I guess. It's going. Probably the add-on going, I, I don't know what to do with this plane. I don't know what you want from me. But this is probably a good time to restart NeoFly anyway. Let me close that. Close this off the server and quit that one. That Halo Pel Pelican, it's a, uh, it's very Xboxy. There's nothing to it really. I mean, there's not a whole lot of controls. It's it's just it's a vanity plane really, and it's. And it's just mostly, you know, and they're not going to, because it's futuristic, like with Star Citizen, you know, you're not going to do a whole lot of manual navigation. You're not going to have old steam gauges and do things. Everything's going to be very automated for you. Same with the Pelican. It's all 
you know, you don't have to do much because it's so futuristic. Okay. Might take a minute to load in. First thing you're going to notice about this, as opposed to every other military aircraft you've probably ever been in, is right away the lack of stuff everywhere. Okay, normally, yeah, it's gonna it's still loading in a little bit. It's gonna be laggy for a minute. Okay, so on this side, on either panel, I mean, normally on aircraft, air military aircraft, there's <clears throat> switches and stuff everywhere. Same with this side. Come on, you. Stop it. Stuff everywhere. Usually switches and knobs and stuff everywhere. If I were to load up the F-16 or the F-18 or whatever, yeah, stuff everywhere. So the first thing you do is realize, yeah, this is, wow. Where did everything go? Yeah, let's see if I can remember how to start this thing now. Integrated powers on. Don't need to worry about cabin pressure. Inverters, those on. In a moment, I think there was something over here. I figure out why it's lagging on me here. It should be loaded in just fine by now. Okay, we need to put this that mode. And I think all we do is now press start. Oh. I might have another setting off somewhere that's causing it to on the battery switch start there we go that's it that's the startup One moment. I've got a. I've got to find uh, at least maybe set things back to default for a minute. Something is a. Uh, something is causing us to lag a little bit. We turn some of these down. Scaling at a hundred. That should be. Twelve eighty by seven twenty. Anyway. this down that helps at all little, not really could be Denver itself I shouldn't be getting this kind of a uh, kind of movement okay Now, look at all that. These are, turn this down. I'm hearing massive engines in my ear. I'm gonna turn it down so you don't have to hear it. So loudly. Okay, what we have is, these are actually four screens and they all display the same information uh, if you want them to, okay, but and say we want this one to display our fuel. Have this one do our uh, engines. Mm. Okay, there's a HUD. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, so keep your eye, if I got the screens right, keep your eye on this screen here. 
and I'm gonna let me close the cockpit. I think I was supposed to pull these ribbons over here too. Pull this. Pull that pin. I'm supposed to set this. There we go. Pull this pin. And okay. Now if I have it right and I hit this button here, we go to stovel mode. The engines are at a 60% tilt at the moment. Okay. And now you can see some of our uh, our hover doors are open. And you can see that the engines around the back are tilting down. Come on, you. Okay. But now we click hover. Engines go to 90 degrees. <clears throat> now, if you push forward or backwards on the joystick, if I have this right. That's pulling back on the joystick, pushing forward. using the sidewinder action of the joystick. Okay, if I tilt it. Okay. Yep, yours. Okay, if you use the. So now, keep your eye here. This is of uh, where the arrow is. This, if you. I, yeah, I get it. Leave me alone. All right, I'm going to turn off air traffic control for a minute. They're Now they're making me mad. Um. Whatever. If I use the aileron, <laughs> I'm gonna shoot her. Use the aileron trim tabs. The right aileron trim. I would get a two. There, are, there's a two knots. We're doing two knots forward. Let me keep pressing aileron trim right, and I believe we can go up to. 25 maybe more up to 50 maybe it's 25 on the reverse fifty okay so fifty knots forward if I use my left aileron trim I can lower it back down so I can go whatever speed I want you know there's dial in 25 Okay, so there's 25 knots. I can still go up higher if I want or lower. Good, I didn't want to talk to you anyway. Oh, it gets better. This wasn't good enough. Amazing enough. So now I'll be using left. Go back down so you can see my readout. Now I'm decreasing our, our forward momentum and I'm going to throw it into reverse. Now we're at negative two, four, five, six, ten. Okay, so negative 20 is the most we can get out of it. But. Now we're flying in, flying in reverse. 
and can still do all whatever maneuvers we want. And or fly sideways. So that's what I meant earlier when I said this is like flying a UFO. All right, get back in the cockpit. Now, let me throw it back into forward momentum. And we'll take it out of hover and we'll transition to forward flight. Oh yeah, landing gear. Okay, gears up. All right. Parking brake is on. Gotcha. All right. So back up to almost 50 knots. And all we got to do is turn off our button. Turn this off. She doesn't want to fall. She does not want to fall. She won't fall out of the sky. All right. If I can slow back down. All right, if I slow back down and I'm in basically, if I, I can get the engine slowed enough and I'm in level flight, I can re-engage, but I have to be slow enough first. So if the engines slow down, I can hit that hook stovel again. Come on. You have to be going under 250 knots, I think. Yeah. So now we're in we're not in full hover mode. We're in we're in stovel mode, but the but the engines aren't sorry if I'm talking loud. I've got loud engines in my ear. I have um the engines are at, at 60 degrees. And so you can still fly like this. And so this is what I mean by it doesn't matter how fast or how slow I'm flying. If you're coming this, what I'm trying to say is this will not let it fall out of the sky. It just, it won't, this thing won't fall out of the sky. I can take my hands off and it just, it's an amazing thing. It has uh, the full autopilot and military radios, and it's got a lot of, um, I mean, I, I can hover, just sit here and hover. Now that I'm hovered, I could probably put it into hover mode. Yep. Now our engines are back to 90, and we can... Um, just sit here and monitor things if we wanted. Okay, another thing uh, about this, all of these, even though we have four separate windows and we can change them to whatever we want at any given time. We have no weapons, so I don't really need any of that. All along the top here, these are basically like icons. The information at the top isn't necessarily like information these are you have to read these like icons so if i wanted to see this information here the engine pop-up screen all i gotta do is click this so no matter what i had displayed on it it'll change to my engine pop-up screen click it again it goes back to whatever it was same with this one 
the fuel pop up. Turn it off. This is an SMM. This is this screen here. Oh no, that's a different one. That's armaments. This is the one. No? Yeah. So now, and you can have redundant information. I could make all of them this one. So this is just allows pilots to customize to whatever they want. Okay. Don't need iCause. Here is our autopilot screen in our autopilot functions. And um, one of the beautiful things about this as opposed to, I can remember how, I mean, it's been a while, but with most aircraft, you have to, <clears throat> there, it, up till now, there's been no way to just kind of like, with certain aircraft to dial in your speed or core settings. And with this, you can, for example, let's say, see if I can set my speed. And you come over here now, just type in 150. And you can set a speed hold, get some speed, and take it out of Stovall. Let it help. Okay. Um, an altitude hold. So, uh, let me turn on autopilot for one. All right, if that's set right, it'll hold at 10,000 feet. Let's do a 90 degree heading. Uh-oh, we're too close to a mountain here. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I saw that one coming. <laughs> That's what I get. That's what I was saying earlier. If you're trying to fly the best you can, next thing you know, you're crashed. Yeah. Tr truly in the, uh, it, it, the, one of the greatest things I've ever flown. If all planes could do that kind of stuff, shh. So for the military guys, it's got to be a dream come true as well because they don't have to take the time to relearn everything. Everything in that cockpit, not only is it streamlined and you don't have a million buttons everywhere, uh, all of the, the labels are what you're used to in every other plane. You know, everything's really easy to find, really easy to read. Everything does what you think it does. Um, it's just a dream all the way around. Try that again without crashing. That's weird, only two of our pop-ups have appeared at the moment.
No, yeah, there's. You're right. You don't have to look everywhere. It's a yeah. You don't have to move your head. It's such a drag, flying the other planes. I mean, I suppose after a while, a real pilot can do it by touch. You know, you know where everything's at. Your hands know where, where to go. But for the most part, you know, what a pain in the butt. And in the simulator, without for me, without doing VR, it is that hard because you do have to turn your head. You've got to move your mouse. You've got to look to where you're looking. And then the way some of the buttons are tucked under the lips of these edges, you have to reposition your camera. It's a real pain in the butt. All right. Okay, another feature it's got is an auto takeoff. This will make the plane. Let me get the is the parking brake engaged. Okay. This will make the plane take off in the shortest distance possible. So it'll probably take off, I would say probably before it hits that over there. But we can find out. Let me hit toggle it auto take off. Okay. I believe all you need to do is now rev it. Oh, let me take it out of oval. And then take off the parking brake. Yeah. Oh. So it'll, uh, take off in the shortest distance possible. It says we're in Stovall mode still. There we go. I saw a video of somebody crashing one of these the other day and I wanted to cry. They hit the runway and for I don't know what happened. But once he touched stop talking. Um I made I made the mistake. I had it in stovel mode. It would have taken up but Jesus. It would have done a lot better had I not had us in Stovall mode, and it would have. Okay. So let's. All right, let's try this again here. Okay, we're at 11,000 feet. I'm the autopilot. All told. Okay, so just clicking out hold, it set us at 11.8 here. All right. Now let me... We're already pointing east. I do wrong now it's not taking my heading hold it's been a while uh auto throttle so at our speed do 
to a speed hold. So setting mm. too much air traffic control talk. All right, let's try this. Unbelievable. All right, I can't take it anymore with air traffic control. Pardon me a moment. Um, the audio, I just don't want to hear them anymore. I'm sick of hearing them. Uh, air traffic control. Voices down to here. I know there is a way to turn off air traffic control. By the way, just turning down the dang voices. I don't want to have to hear them anymore. That's just entirely too much talking. So something's up with the vertical and the heading hold. It's not taking. I also got, have, got how to pull up my uh my main navigation screen. Figure out which one it is again. Checklist CNR. Yeah. That's down here, though. This tells us our speed. That's uh, not really what I wanted, though. A huddle work. Nah, well, let me keep going through these. Yeah, it's probably been six months or more since I played with this. You know. Okay, whatever. Vertical speed hold, VOR holds, if we add a VOR. Uh, we have other menu here. Oh, another thing about these screens in uh, setting them up, some of them have blanks here at the bottom, and you can add, you can either increase the size of a screen to take up a larger portion, or you can... Uh, and add more add more so you have like two mini screens on each one of these screens if you wanted figure out what's up with our our heading hold here that's what crashed us in the mountain last time is i dialed in a heading hold and it started spinning to it and then it didn't take Huh. This is a route hold. Either way, she's a beauty. You know, open it up, turn off speed hold.
Yep. That's exactly right. You can customize these any way you want. If you're using an external camera, you can break the sound barrier and get that sonic boom and you get that, you can hear it. And I don't remember my keys to turn on my afterburner. Okay. But this sure is a lot faster than flying that little Cessna around. A lot of fun. So again, slow it down. Try to get it under 250 knots. Be at a level flight. And engage Stovall. Level it out and oh, I took it out. Wrong one. Trying to throw us back in a hover and land on somebody's farm. Auto throttle still on, that's why. I can't hover. Yeah. Uh, was my gear? All right. So yeah, the um, it's got three variants. I don't know why anybody would want a variant of that plane without <laughs> the Stovall capability. I I just don't know why. On. It can do it, but nah, I don't want to do any of that cool stuff. I just want a normal version. So there's three versions, and the third version, the C version, is a carrier version. And so it also has hover mode, but it's got a hook. I don't know why you would still want to come in and do the silly catapult landing and try to grab that catapult hook when you could just hover and land on the, the aircraft carrier. So having a hook to me is the same kind of thing. It's like, why 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 bother this is the top gun stuff i was talking about earlier the add-on the maverick activities on combat stuff you can get this bad boy now the antonov that russian plane it's got 16 wheels it's a super super heavy cargo plane it's like the uh the spruce goose but i think it's even bigger 
massive. Oh, the Honda Jet. I wanted to show you the Honda Jet. There's, I, I have the spruce goose. There's the, the goose right there. The Hughes Aircraft Company. It flies. It's not just for show. The spruce goose flies. This one I will put us on a runway. Starting up and going through the starter procedures on this can be a little, uh. It's neat though. It's it's all done like iPad style, but there's still stuff you need to set up. You have to set up your uh, passengers. You have it run through some diagnostics. It's very, uh, very nice. But it's all done with these little little iPad looking screens. And this one does take a moment to load it and it always glitches out. Not glitches out, it just rubber bands real hard when you get in there. It takes a moment to load. Time is it? And I missed our uh, 20 minute. Something's gone. Do I have, what do I have open? Skype is still open. That could be causing some of the lag. Pardon me, I forgot to close that. Skype is open. Let me close Skype. And all I should have is OBS at the moment. I don't have any of the add-on stuff done. It's probably just Skype. Skype is a monster still. At least it is. Any, every little thing for me, this computer. I'll just sit for a minute. Yeah, I think it's Denver is the most part is that it's 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 got Denver loaded and it's just Denver's so busy. Ready. And this is almost terrible on here. This is what I meant by the little, the little iPad screens here. A lot of things are set up now with this, and they they drive these monitors up here. They can drive the information on this one at least for sure. This one's really easy to start too. I mean, you got your battery switches and you just press, you just come over here and you press these start buttons like a Honda car. Just you press start. Your flaps, speed brakes, de ice, fuel. Where are they at? gear um but you can this part is really neat too 
like setting up a flight plan. This is neat. So flight plan. Okay. Zoom in a little bit. Oh boy. All right. So we're at the uh, ABJC. And let's say we're going to Colorado Springs. Just this simple, just so fast. All right. Now, if we wanted to add waypoints in here, we could. I I don't feel the need to add any waypoints at the moment. Um, our radios. Nav one, nav two, com one, com two. All right. Now. So, un, set. Now we can also do uh, arrival and takeoff procedures, departure procedures, and approach procedures. Set up our approach, and we'll set it up an approach for uh, ILS thirty-five right. And those charts we we're talking about, it adds those in here already. So this one has two different charts associated with it, two different entries. That you can choose from and it already it has them pre-programmed in here so no looking at charts for this thing either if you well if you know which one you want i don't know which one at the moment so i'll just go with vectors so much more this thing can do it's so amazing there's it's it it's a, a, a really neat neat plane this thing will do 400 knots so like what, almost 600 miles an hour, 500 miles an hour? Pressurized oxygen. Yeah, for the Honda Jet, for sure. It certainly does. Uh, I've looked at both the user's manual and the actual guide for the, the aircraft. And yeah, it's, it's designed to specifications. So we have the lovely, uh, they've got these synthetic visions. If you're looking at the, uh, the screens here, the synthetic vision on these things is fantastic. I think these are Garmin 3000s. The one I want with that, that Cessna is a G1000. I think these are the threes. Uh, but it's got a beautiful uh, autopilot system as well. Yeah, it certainly it certainly does seem like magic. That's for that's for sure. Autopilot. All right, and. 
and this one. Set our altitude. Set it at for 12. And set vertical uh, altitude hold. And flight level change. And we can set our vertical. And we should be able to do a proper heading hold with this now. Turn on heading hold. And now if we dial. Yeah, it's turned around all the way to the south. Let me bring it back around. No, I don't want to fly to the mountains. Let's uh, turn it to the south. I'm rotating the heading bug around to 150. There we go. Now we can dial in our heading. Get how to change these screens. Then down here, though, I believe these are the diagnostics where you set up your passengers and do diagnostic stuff. Oh, that won't clear for now. That's what I get for not messing with this stuff for a long time. I've been, uh, I was playing um, <clears throat> this title called Mountain Blade Banner Lord for several months. <clears throat> and playing other titles, I've kind of gotten. Felt like Johnny was being bored. I was just doing so much flight simulator that I just took a long break. But like anything else, you you don't use it, you lose it. Start forgetting things. But yeah, this, this is a beautiful plane. In the real world, if I had the money, that's where I would be. That's that's big pimping right there. Find out what's up with my graphics. I can be set low. I don't even have the building set to high. Uh, I had the, the clouds set to high. <clears throat> we had really amazing clouds going on here the other day, so I was trying to visualize them all out. Don't need that set so high. Oh, the road traffic. That's probably what was killing us. I'll bet you again, any, any road traffic. And then we're dealing with Denver. 
<laughs> That's why you need an Uber machine if you want to do anything like that. So these are all the all the aircraft I have now. I have all oh, they they gave me a whole bunch of planes that I didn't want. I haven't flown that yet. The Bell Model 407 helicopter. There's the F-18. Bush planes. Ski planes. There's the you know float planes. There's one with skis on them. There's an old timer. Biplane. There's the F-14. Gliders. They've given us gliders now. This thing here. Did uh, I don't know if you saw the latest Top Gun movie, Maverick, or not, but at the start of the movie, he's in an experimental plane from Lockheed Martin. And he's doing a test to try to get the plane to Mach 10. That's this plane right here. There's a mission in here where you fly Mach 10 and you go across the entire United States from Mojave Desert in California all the way to Cape Canaveral in 30 minutes. This one is a study level plane, meaning that they're trying to model this absolutely to real world specifications. So everything on the overhead panels, every they want everything in the plane to function as, as it can, even the printer. So it, airplanes have like text-based messaging you can do between planes and you can do paper readouts. It's got a working printer. Basically, they're gonna try to make this plane as real as possible. So if you're into wanting to go beyond what the simulator can do and take it to real world, fly by wire. And I just uninstalled like 50 different other planes. They gave me all the racing planes and I'm not doing any racing whatsoever. So I don't want all the racing planes, but I could just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. They give you like 50 racing planes. Really crazy. I don't know why so many. This thing is neat. This is a, basically, this is a taxi drone. I don't know how well you can see this or not, but it's got helicopter blades all over the top. Let me just load it in. Then this is a trip. It's a taxi drone. And it doesn't fly fast in any way, but this is something that pretty much anybody could get into. And with less than 15 minutes worth of time in it, anybody, <clears throat> anybody could fly this. It's so slow and it's so safe that anybody could just get in it, get in it and fly it. What I'm waiting for is high performance ones that fly like drones because drones can fly sideways drones can fly basically upside down drones can fly drones are amazing have you seen any of the like drone racing so eventually somebody's going to release high performance versions of these things this is a real world thing it is in uh, i do believe they're using them in Europe at the moment. They're trying to get him over here for drone taxi. Seems awful silly. I mean, when I look at it, it's it seems silly. Just why? I mean, that's that's ridiculous. Why? Why not just one big one? But that's the stability of having drones. Uh, you know, or the, the stability of having setups like this, I guess.
Mm, and this is it. There's not. There is nothing. I have to restart my computer. Right now, it doesn't have any. Uh, they said maybe later they'll put in the uh, the GPS. You can do programming, but it's only at the moment like a fifteen minute battery. Yeah, I'm gonna have to restart things here. Everything's even this getting uh. So that's just throttle up and throttle down. Uh oh. Yeah, it's bugged. So Sometimes she'll go unstable. It's brand new. So they're still working out the bugs. But they want to start using these in the United States. For taxis. See if we can land in this parking lot right here. Lois. See what I mean as we get closer to the ground level, how the graphics all break up. I mean, those buildings look horrible. Maybe with better video cards, still be better. But. Rough. But uh, look at how horrible things look. I And even now, I don't have the, the building set to high model or the texture set to high. And I'm sure I could make it look a little bit better. But I still normally can't get much, much better in some cases beyond some of this. In cities where they've done high modeling like Las Vegas, it looks a lot better. But once you get off the main strip where they're not paying attention to detailing anymore, yeah, things start looking like this. Yeah. Yeah, you're right though. But in the air, I mean it's it's a it's beautiful. I mean, you don't really like I said, my goal has never been for the sightseeing at this point. It's been for the learning, but with the new machine, I'm sure. There are guys out there doing videos of uh, the 8K super high resolution and like, is this, is it real or is this a game? So there are people out there that are getting all the, the goods. But for sightseeing, this is the this is the baby you want. She's great. Right, exactly. Yep.
We'll uh, let's play some baseball. The, the Volo Copter. And this is their marketplace. Let's see what's uh have to offer here. The head the top stuff. New helicopter, new twin engine plane. See you can get all these custom sceneries for places that you live. I only look at the Colorado stuff, but this is for I don't know. Buenaventura, I have no idea where that's at. This guy's adding in these little trains and stuff it seems Scotland Edinburgh night enhanced we can get better airports there's Shreveport Louisiana somebody just added that what you got over here a couple more airports ah oh, they added the fulcrum the mig the mig 29 fulcrum and then all the liveries you can get for them. These are carriers that you can get, uh, amphibious groups, the carriers that you can get. So if you're doing the, uh, if you want to do carrier landings, it puts in all the carriers, and I guess they place them where the real world carriers are at, or currently at. It does the real world. Looks like they added in the Osprey, really. Osprey plus world carrier bundle. Wow, I I think I might have to get one of these. I'm not so much interested in the carriers. It's that's hard crap to do, man. Carrier landings are a drag. But if they're offering the Osprey, which they are here, Osprey MV22, I think I'd like to get one of the one one of those. Yeah, carriers. Uh, some more planes. There's that Antonov again. A lot of people love this one. People are going crazy for it. I'm not, uh, I don't know too much about the aviation world, but everybody's was begging for this one and they want this one. Oh, that's one. You can get activities like training, more training. Guide to flight simulator in uh, instrument flight rating training jetliner training navigation training VFR training challenges beautiful canyons part one through six one through four the Colorado River adventures Here's the Gerald Ford carrier. USS America. You don't have to add the world updates in. I, I don't fly internationally at the moment, but they've got, um, and these are all free. So if, if you do live in one of these countries and you want to, it, or if you just have a good enough computer, yeah, and you just want to go for broke, you can get all the world, all the updates, Germany, Italy, Spain, Canada, New Zealand, Japan. I do all the USA updates, of course. United Kingdom, France, and Belgium, Nord Nordics. Nightlight enhancement. I've already got the nightlight enhancement for Colorado. Look at this one. Camp out utility. So uh, I've been hearing about this one. So supposedly if you have bu a bush trip in, and you land, you can deploy your camp out utility. An add-on for Microsoft Flight Simulator allows you to take camping equipment on board any aircraft. Set up a camp anywhere in the world you want to call home for a night or a week. It's not scenery. It's live and dynamic object placement and management. 
all via an in-sim menu. This unique add-on provides an opportunity to combine the serenity and beauty of flying with the peaceful vibes of camping. When you find that special spot in the world you want to make your own, you'll know exactly why flying is optional. So, yeah. And includes Best Friends DLC pack with over 17 popular dog breeds to choose from. <laughs> Winds with reactive objects include tents, portable windsock, and smoke canisters. Additional themed objects to be released. Oddly satisfying sounds when placing objects. That's a funny way to describe it. Oddly satisfying sounds. Worldwide object persistence. So I guess meaning you pitch a tent, take off, you come back, it's still there. Works with any aircraft anywhere. Share system allows you to share campouts with friends. It's neat. Amazing what they're able to do with this. There's that Osprey, not bundled. Look at the, look at the propellers on that thing. It's crazy. Yeah, this lot to do. The flight training in it is okay. Uh I'm not I, I I'm I'm not a big fan. I write a lot of um heated heated messages and heated forum posts on their flight training. It's it's really it's crap, really, to be honest. They've spent so much time creating a great simulator and then they totally slacked off or whomever they hired to create these training missions. Maybe the whole point was to get other people to buy the other training stuff so they didn't want to make them too good so people could sell their training stuff, I guess. They don't give you enough information. They set you up for failure and all these are is, is frustrating. There's, there's really not too much practical stuff. I mean... If you can get past these, you have to have more knowledge going into these. So it's it's just a joke, really. This is one of the saddest things about it. Yeah, like Star Citizen, I'm sure you can spend a lot of money. How much of you uh how much do you think you have spent in Star Citizen? Wow. Yeah, that's quite a bit. But you own some of the most amazing ships there are. I can't believe how big some of those ships are. And I'll bet you that's not even the largest yet. Wow. 
right. I don't know if it's because I've been streaming so long or just things have gone awry or whatever, but I'm noticing, um, I am noticing lag. I'm going to, um, if you'll forgive me, I'm going to go ahead and end the live stream and uh, call it a day on this particular live stream. And I'm going to take the opportunity to start rebooting everything, reboot the computer and start up everything again. Uh, And I will probably continue on with the live streams later this evening. I'm going to need a afternoon break. And I'm also um, thinking about live streaming another game called Baldur's Gate 3. If you've ever played any of the Dungeons and Dragons games. Oh, it is. Oh, 420. Okay. I will share the PPP with you. And then, uh, yeah, at definitely a good break point. Because even here, just trying to load in, and as it's transitioning screens here, I'm noted. That's where I'm noticing the lag. Just it, and even these, it's not making smooth transitions and just doing cuts. Like that. Look at that. That laggy right there. So it's a good time to end and reboot everything. All right, Nim, it was great seeing you, and I will uh, see you soon. And um, I think you're liked and subscribed and everything. If you hit that notify button at the top of the YouTube screen, or the, it's usually a bell icon or it says notify, it um, should give you a, a pop-up or a message. I've never used it. I've never, I've never done it, so I don't know how it works. But everybody's like, make sure you hit that notify button. And um, so that'll let you know when I'm broadcasting, I guess. And uh, like I said, I might be doing um, Baldur's Gate tonight. It is 5th uh, edition Dungeons and & Dragons. And uh, it's a pre-release still. And they're adding in, uh, they've added in some new classes. Uh, I think the Paladin is in there now and, and some other ones. So yeah. I will see you soon. Great seeing you, and I really appreciate you hanging out with me on my live stream today. So, all right, my friend. Adios. And anybody else who might be watching, thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you for taking a minute out of your day to check something out like this. Please like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Goodbye.